Are we on the air? We're live. We're live finally. I know we're a little bit late here. You know, we're having some te technical difficulties in the background that getting set up. Yeah. I hope you have your big girl panties on. This is like episode, I think it's, uh, I want to say 92. There, there you go. Episode 92, 92. of the Who wow. Moves My Freedom podcast 92. from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. There we go. Our special awesome. guest tonight, of Big course, Daddy. Walter's here. There's Walter from Safety Arbor Fire. Last on. minute, last minute. Yeah, Walter's jumping in. Um, here's Tim from a undisclosed box or, Secret bunker. Bunker. or well. Uh, Tim, it puts the lotion on its skin. <laughs> it puts the lotion on its skin. Yeah. So Tim is coming. Tim is from Tactical Walls. He's joining us today. In case you guys don't notice, look at that. Right behind me, I actually have Tactical Walls. Up on the walls, and then I got like tactical balls up there. <laughs> you see, on top of your tactical wall. The tactical balls are on top of the tactical wall shelf here. So we are going to do lots of talking about tactical walls tonight. Tim, you you uh, what's your role at tactical walls? Are you the CEO owner? I started it, and up until just recently was the CEO. We've recently named a new CEO, and I've taken on a different role in the company. Uh, where I try to help drive new innovation and help more so with all, some of the operation stuff, some of the guys with uh, on the floor production stuff. Oh, okay, cool. So you're kind of like uh, developing the new things that are coming out. Yeah. And yep. uh, and uh, streamlining production and all that. Because I'm I'm assuming you guys are just growing bigger and bigger every day. Well, we we were growing really big the first few years, and we bought a new building, or well, we bought an old building new to us. And when we did that, we're starting to make a bunch of different transitions and changes, and the staff is changing, and it's growing, and then it's contracting. So what we did was we went and sought out some some help for some some people that have been through business before. I'm I'm you know I'm not a businessman per se, so we wanted to go find good help so that we could have someone help lead through those challenging times instead of having me a total noob, you know, there at the helm. So we got our, we got ourselves a nice seasoned CEO who's been through many business cycles and um, has, has dealt with growth and the challenges that come with it. And that's freed me up to focus more on the creative side and the development of new things and seeing how far we can push it. Uh, and same thing for Chris as well. Chris is actually out and about right now doing some different things at Cabela's. Uh, we've oh. got some d displays at a variety of Cabela's across the country and oh, sweet. We're trying to grow that relationship. So the whole, right. our, our business has changed a bit in the last couple of years. So we're kind of, our, what our functions and roles are changing as well. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So we're going to, we're going to dig into that a little bit deeper. I want to take the time here to thank everyone that's hanging out with us in the chat. I'm going to shout out some people. I know yesterday we didn't get to do like a roll call. I'll do that today, especially since the folks have been waiting for some time. Uh, while I'm doing that, I want to encourage everyone to please click the thumbs up button for this video. Click the thumbs up. Okay. And share this video. Walter, that includes you. You can go and click oh, the thumbs yeah. up and all that kind of stuff. I will. Stuff. I will. I'm, I'm still, and, uh, still uh, Tim, we don't want to create any more technical difficulties, so no <laughs> thumbs up in for you. You don't, want, <laughs> you don't want me, trust me, you don't want me doing anything. It's, <laughs> don't make it any worse. <laughs> you can't even see me. Don't breathe. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is this is so funny. <laughs> but, <Okay>. you know. <laughs> um, we, you know, we should have made you put on that uh, Afro wig that you had when I saw you. Yeah, I, it, that's so, I don't even know where that's at right now. Oh, yeah, I do, I do know where that is now. Because that was freaking me out. You were looking like the, uh, what was the name of that artist? What's that, that oh, painter? Bob, 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 the guy. Um, what is that? Paint with a paintbrush. A yes. Paint paintbrush, yeah. Um, and, and Tim was freaking me out. I saw him at a rock veteran. I'm like, is this the real dude? Is this, <laughs> He's dead, is this though. Some, is He's it? dead. Well, I, I, I didn't know that because when I'm looking at him, he had on, I was like, I, I don't understand what's happening right now. <laughs> so that was really funny. Um, I guess the shenanigans continue here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily deliberate. We don't even know where you are. I don't think we want to know. Oh, well, <laughs> That's quiet. That's the most yeah. important thing is it's quiet. Yes, exactly. Because there was a massive party with a bunch of like eight-year-old girls going on in your house. And it was insane. When you stepped away for a second, there were girls coming and looking at the screen like, what is this? Yeah, I've, yeah. I've got a, I, I, my family, you know, we've got a family of six and our house is about a thousand square feet. So there's not very many places you can go for quiet. 
Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and my wife, we've got some friends that are going to be leaving soon. And my wife didn't realize I was doing a podcast and she invited some friends over to say goodbye. So in addition to, to my family, we've got another set of friends over with their kids. So yeah, the kids so, are in there just having a blast. So thumbs up out here and I'm going to stay off the technology as much as possible. Cause yeah. That's no good for anyone. Uh, uh, is it cold out there? Cause no, no. no. Oh, okay. All right. So let me do the roll call. I'm, I'm reminding everyone, click the thumbs up, share this video with your family and friends. Let folks know that we're on and we're doing this. Uh, let's see who was in here first. I thought Tyvin was in here first today, but that part of the chat is gone. So I guess we can't, we can't roll back that far. So shout out to Tyvin, shut up and play your guitar, gorillas and guns, DT two mega boost. Uh, Kentucky Firearms, Joe Carpenter, Chris Bolas, Chris B, Imposter, what's up? Uh, Mark Wagner, I'm trying to see, uh, did I say Gorillas and Guns? Shout out to Gorillas and Guns. Um, yeah, when I first looked at the chat, man, it was going like a... like a, Yeah, it was going crazy. They were getting raunchy. Uh, if we don't get things started here on time, they get pissed then they it's, get like, it's like a, like a wild, it's like Animal Farm or something <laughs> like that. Those guys just get crazy. They start making jokes, getting real raunchy. Start devouring each other live. Yeah, they were, yeah, they were getting like triple X rated in there. You know, just really crazy. Tango hunters in here. Vanessa Kitty. Um, let me see. I'm, I, I guarantee you, I'm gonna miss people. So just uh, tell me. You know, give me the roll call thing, and we'll do it again. But there's a bunch of people. Screaming Skull Saloon. I see you. Screaming Skull Saloon's in here. Let me see who's shouting out. Let me see who's talking right now. Okay, 904 Outdoors is also here. What's going on? Mike Bryant, uh, Ibelio, uh, Phrygian68, what's going on? Zachary Cahill, what's up? You know, um, I'm turn it E. Off. Cocal, <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, so anyway, there's lots of folks. If you want me to shout you out, just let me know. Like I, I said, we do have tactical walls in the building, and then we have tactical walls here. See, I got a nice tactical wall set up. So in the future, going forward here, you guys will be able, we'll be showing you more stuff about tactical walls. I've also, I've got the shelf here and I think all I need to do, I've got the shelf unlocked. Boom, the shelf, see how that drops down? There's no guns in there yet. But in the future, cause we got to cut out the foam and everything. You know, Tim, we didn't like, we just got this up today, literally. So. <laughs> I've got to cut out the phone, but what we're going to be doing in the future, if I have a cool gun in here, you know, I'll drop it down. This will drop down. You'll be able to see the cool gun. We can talk about it. You know, that's all going to be courtesy of Tactical Walls. That's who you guys think for that. You got to move the key. Oh, I got to move one of the keys out. There you go. Yeah. See, uh, I'm just now figuring out how to. Operator error. Yeah. How to use the Tactical Walls. So there you go. So we're going to have that set up. And I think that we've got a, um, a link right in the description, Lola, where folks who are interested in this, Lola can't hear me right now. <laughs> talking to her, Lola, we've got a link in the description, right? Yes. Okay. So there you go. We've got a link in the description for anyone's interested, who's interested in anything from tactical walls. You can go on there and uh, get stuff through that link. And, uh, what do you let's see what should we get what should we get into here first have you ever heard of tactical walls walter from you from me and one of your previous shows yeah okay there you go all right so what do you think how does it look here i don't know if i should like pick up the camera and do a little little move it around here we go i'll move i'll move the camera around a little bit um tim is up to something over there yeah, i just so they, realized i i just realized i don't have my laptop plugged in but I brought oh. the plug, so I just oh. got to plug it in. That way I don't uh, – Oh, okay. <laughs> so you don't lose me in about an hour when, when yeah. the thing okay. goes in. Yeah, so there you go. Like I'm in a little tight space here in the corner in the studio just so you guys can see. But that's just a little move around. A look at what's going on over here. Um, is, here we go. This is going to be one of those shows for the history books. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I can't do anything simple. <laughs> <laughs> so – yeah, there you go. Um, now I got to set back up my camera because I moved my camera around. Okay, there we go. All right, so it's all set up now. All right, so um, when the, so you're obviously the original inventor of the tactical wall, right? Sure. Yeah. So how did this? How did you come up with this idea? 
So I started buying guns uh, years and years ago. I moved in, you know, same, same story. You know, you get married, start having kids, you have your own house, you're out on your own. And you figure, I got to protect my family. So you buy your first handgun. So, you know, for bumps in the night, you know, right. you, you don't want to be unarmed. So I bought my first gun. And as anyone who has ever bought a gun knows, it doesn't take too long until you buy a second and third and yeah. 15th gun. They just start no. to accumulate. Yeah, so, I say, I always tell people it's like a gateway drug to freedom. It's a gateway drug to freedom, yeah, and <laughs> happiness and, and responsibility. Yes. And uh, and it's kind of strange, you know, having your, your first gun in the house when you're not used to it because that, that first week or so, every noise, you hear everything in the middle of the night just because there's – You've got a gun, you know, and it's there's a there's a great gravity and weight of responsibility that comes with owning such a, you know, powerful and freedom uh, dispersing piece of equipment. But um, as my as my collection of firearms started to grow, I had a stack of pistol cases on a shelf and I had a pile of rifle cases slid under the bed. You know, all these plastic cases that come with the firearms when you buy them. And like I said before, I, I've got, I live in a small house, so all of my guns were stacked up in like the same little area. And every time we'd travel out of state for family functions, we got Thanksgiving coming up. So in the past, I'd go visit family or friends back in Pennsylvania. And when I'd leave, I would take all my guns and I'd hide them. I'd take them out of their cases. I'd hide them all over the place in my house okay. just because I didn't want some, you know, meth head breaking into my house, finding all my guns in one nice, neat little pile. And then stealing them all and having them out on the street. So you didn't have like a big safe or anything like that. I didn't have a big safe, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and I mean, really, the thing with that is, I love safes and the idea of a safe. But uh, if I had five hundred dollars to buy a safe, that meant I had five hundred dollars to buy one or two more guns. Right. So <laughs> uh, it was like my priority was buying another gun or more ammo for the gun, not so much a safe. Yeah, everyone faces that, you know, like, you know, okay, you should get, you need a safe or you need another safe. But you're like, yeah, it's 500 bucks or a thousand bucks or 2000. Yeah. But with that 2000, I could get this gun that I really, really, really wanted. Yeah. That's yeah. And, and, and it's with, with like, I've got four kids too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I was on a, on a much tighter income at the time and, and it was never, the safe was never the priority. So, so my solution for it was just to hide the guns, hide all my guns everywhere. And then when I would come home from a, from a family vacation or a, a weekend away, I'd have to go find all my guns. I have to hi, uh, find where I hit them all, like a, like a squirrel looking for his nut. And, you know, <laughs> when you only have three or four, it's pretty easy to remember where you have three or four hidden. But when you have mm. many, many and you've got them hidden all over the place, all of a sudden you're, you're counting and you're, you're missing something. And then you don't remember where you put it. So... The idea was I needed a way to hide my guns right where they'd be, and I'd never have to unhide them. I just would know where each hiding spot in in the house was. So I I came up with this idea of, of kind of making it so I could hide it right there in my bedroom, right next to the bed. Mm -hmm. Instead of it being under the bed, it was hidden next to the bed behind a mirror or in a shelf. So it saved me. It was just out of a you know, you know necessity. Like I wanted to be lazy. I didn't want to have to hide them and find them. I just wanted to hide them and know where they were. So okay. that was the, that was the main thing. And my, my main driving force for it was to keep the, just the thought of my guns being on the street, being used for crimes was really my main driving force. It wasn't the fact I had kids. I mean, my kids have been brought up with firearms and, um, have their own now. So as far as, as that aspect goes, you know, you want to keep the guns away from little ones and you want to make sure they get the proper perspective on guns, I should say. But my driving force was more the bad guys. Yeah. And I'm sure people are going to probably ask the question like, you know, why wouldn't you just get a safe? And I don't think there's anything wrong with the safe. But uh, you also want to be able to have access to stuff when you need it, right? You know. Well, and that's the other thing. Our, our safe, uh, as far as a safe goes, a safe is designed to keep your firearm collection safe. Whatever it is you're putting in the safe, it's designed to keep that thing safe. Whereas our products, a tactical wall, if you're using it for defensive purposes, it's designed to help you keep your family safe. Mm -hmm. So the difference being you would put your heirlooms, you'd put your grandfather's, you know, your, your hand, your hand-me-down guns from your, your father, grandfather, you put that in the safe to keep it safe. You just want your, your shotgun, your AR, whatever your defensive weapon, your home defense weapon, your tool. It's more a tool than a, 
then it's it's you know not something you're looking to pass on necessarily mm -hmm. and that's what you need access to so mm -hmm. okay very cool oh we just Tyvin just jumped in here um looks like he's getting set up okay so that that uh i'm trying to think oh you know what i wanted to say to you kentucky had, firearms go ahead he, he and i got the same lighting guy yeah <laughs> Tyvin <laughs> is probably in his truck he's a truck driver he's a tractor trailer driver so, nice to meet you, sir. Thanks for having me on, Hank. Walter. Hey, you know, Tyvin. What's going on, Tyvin? It looks like Tyvin's on the road. Um, I don't know what your excuse is, Tim. Uh, yeah. you, you just pretend you're in something real sexy, you know? It's like you're in your – Tim's, Tim's in a tank right now. <laughs> I'm going to say Ford Expedition or Chevy Avalanche. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't think that has anything to do – um, it, it might be some kind of vehicle, but it I don't is, think no, it's a Ford. It's a Ford. It's my E three fifty. It's our big black ambulance. It's a four wheel drive. It was a converted ambulance into a big four wheel drive battle vehicle wagon. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Ap apocalyptic escape vehicle. Yeah. Sort of. It's a big rolling billboard. We've got tactical walls on the side of it. It's got a winch on the front. It's four wheel drive. It's diesel. It's just a big eye catcher and, and anytime yeah. we stop for fuel anytime we're on the road and we stop to get fuel at a gas station people are coming up to us asking us about it or telling us we follow you on facebook which is really strange to me to be in like a a circle k and somebody just walking up and saying i follow you on facebook and i say <laughs> wow that's nice. what's yeah. facebook yeah <laughs> you know about the facebook yeah, you guys, you guys are also on Instagram, right? You probably really yeah, do. Yeah, we, we do, like the Tactical Walls does, but I'm, I don't touch that stuff oh, at all. Okay. okay. I, I'm as good at that as I was at the setup for this, so you can oh, imagine where we'd go. be. If, <laughs> where, you can imagine where we'd be if I was responsible for our social media. I know right now Tim is like, well, you said Tim is on the road doing stuff. He's probably like, what? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, not Tim, Chris. Chris, right? That's uh, Yeah, Chris is, Chris is Chris, in... Yeah. Uh, I don't even, he, he got home. He was home for two days. He turned around and he left again. He's doing this big tour de, tour de, uh, tour de Cabela's. We'll yeah. call it. Yeah. Chris is probably looking like, I don't know what happened. Hey, I, I got a quick question. Yes. What's up? Um, I've actually looked at your products and was considered using your products in my arms room. Um, I was wanting to know what type of material do you use to make your, uh, walls? Um, is that like uh, ABS plastic? Do you use some type of vinyl or it's, or metal? It's a high density. It's HDPE, high density polyethylene. Isn't so, that the same, isn't that the same stuff that they use for like the decks? That style, same style plastic. They, they can use it for decking. They use it for milk jugs. Use it for those blue fifty-five gallon drums. They use it for a lot of different things. But what, what some of the properties that are really good about it? It's soft, so it's not going to damage your gun. It's softer than any of your gun stuff. And it's not uh, it's non-reactive to solvents, so lubricants. Anything you'd have on your gun for cleaning or lubricating it, it's not going to affect it or harm it in any way. And that's the stuff that's behind Hank. He's got hanging on his wall there. Uh, that's the HDP panel. It's our mod wall system. So if I've got done cleaning my gun and everything, and then I spray it down to protect it, and I hang it on the wall, and if it happens to drip and I walk away for it for three, four months, I'm not going to find a hole in my wall. It's not gonna do nothing. No, uh, exactly. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a lot of guys that use a lot of corrosive uh, cleaners and stuff, like the brake cleaner with certain type of chemical compounds that's in it that will actually take the bluing and stuff off of your metal, and they don't realize that. And when they go and they put stuff away and they get the gun back out. And it's chrome because it ate all the bluing off of it. That's why I was asking. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a good question because people don't realize that, you know, you clean your gun, you put it back because you're showing it off a little bit, right? Or a lot. Yeah, and in that particular that. product, that's more for showing off, displaying. Um, and where that came from was as you start to amass a larger collection of firearms, then you got all the accessories that come with that, the optics, the lights, guys that are in the night vision, stuff uh, along that line. And you, you fall into this whole trap of you go to the range, you take 15 boxes with you, handguns and accessories and whatnot, knives, and you come back from the range and you un unload everything. And you, I mean, you forget what you have as your collection starts to grow and you don't even know. So this is a way for people to organize their 
you know, all their cool toys, organize yeah. all that stuff in a way where you can just step back and admire it and look at it and ah! see it all in one big picture. Yeah, Pretty it's like in the movie. Yeah. It's like John Wick or something going in, uh, you know, with a gun wall or into a gun room or something like that. Yeah. You know, I got a strobe light over in the corner when I hang all my guns and stuff. <laughs> my strobe light flashes and I walk in. <laughs> That's what's wrong with you, Diamond. <laughs> now, do you guys also yeah. make like a, a tabletop version as well um, to where you can slide the mounts around and then use it, you know, if you're building a weapon? Do you guys make like a tabletop? We don't get Slab. into that, the kind of stuff you're talking about where you you like a armorer's block where you can put it in a vice and you can put it down in the mag well to hold it. We don't really make anything like that. Uh, we can make some stuff for display type purposes. You know, for somebody who wants to have a rifle up on a desk or something and really show it off. We, we so you, do, you don't even make like a piece that you can just put on your workbench. It's just flat, like a table cover style oh, out of your material. We definitely could. We've never really had anyone ask us about that, but we definitely could. Yeah, I don't okay. see why you couldn't take one of these panels and just put them down on the if you if that's what you want on the work desk. Well, yeah, a lot of guys will clean their weapons and stuff when they're home, and they usually do it on the coffee table. And that's why I was asking if you actually had something that a guy could get and put on the coffee table that would keep your cleaning compounds and all that stuff from getting on. And it, it would go in Jason. So when you go back in your arms room, everything matches. You yeah. know, some of us guys were color coded matching, you know, and all that stuff. <laughs> no, where's, I, where's Kevin Dixie when you need him? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So go ahead, yeah. Tim. Sorry. No, so that's a, that's a good idea. And it would be like an armorer's pad or something just to keep you from, from beating up your kitchen table. And your, so your wife I mean, doesn't want to shoot you when you get done cleaning your gun. Yeah, that goes back to... Uh, like like Hank's question about you know not just buying a safe, for me the safe isn't wasn't well, I don't say it wasn't practical it was just that my desire was to use my my funds more for more guns or ammo, but there are actually a lot of times where we've got customers who, you know a a thousand pound safe or even a seven hundred pound safe isn't really viable for them because they live on the third or fourth story of an apartment building, and they really can't get a safe up there. Absolutely, you know they're not yeah. they're not going to do that, so they don't really have an option. Or if they live in the apartment, maybe you know they're they're younger, just out of college or just got married, so they might only have two or three guns, and they don't have the the necessity for for the big safe. Everyone aspires to that, you know, have the big, really well made safe to keep the collection in, and and have your you know, or even now the vault rooms is becoming such a thing where people are building these safe rooms or vault rooms. And then you go inside, and like we said, it's the John Wick room where you've got all your guns on display, floor to ceiling. Right. Yeah, once so. you once you build that, uh, once you get that big safe, you are never moving. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Or you're going to leave the safe behind. I know With people who, yeah, I know people who <laughs> move, sell the house, and they're like, yeah, the safe's just going to stay there. Yeah, yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah. You know, and I mean. You know, sometimes that's the best way to do things. So, okay, you know what? I do think that's a, I think that that's a, not a bad idea. I know I like to, you know, there's a workshop that I have that Lola likes to send me off to to do stuff. But I want to be in the house and harass Lola at the same time that I'm building a gun or something. So that's not a bad idea to have something that you could put down and then maybe um, you can mount your gun on, on a, you know, like a slot and you can mount your gun on there and move it around into the right position while you're well, watching well, TV. The main, the main reason I was asking because you got the slides in there where you put your hangers. If it was a flat service and you made a specific slider where you could slide in like a magwell slide in, you can mount your weapon on there and then work on it, do whatever you want to yeah. do. And when you're done, slide it off, and then you can hang that back on the wall with like a couple quick get disconnects or whatever, yeah. and then slide it back in and then put your weapon right back on the wall. Yep, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, very Because cool. a lot of guys, they live in apartments, and all they got is this itty-bitty little closet that they keep two or three weapons in. They really don't have the option to, to cut so they could get your panels, cut the fit, and then mount it in. And then hang everything and make it look like, hey, this is my specific little arms room. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me just share this. Kentucky Firearms Network says he has a hollowed out uh, the frigid air fridge <laughs> with a lock, and that's what he uses as a safe. <laughs> he but says, that's actually 
Yeah. That's, that's pretty popular. It's, a, it's like a diversionary tactic because someone breaks in that, that meth head I was talking about, some crackhead. They crack. It's not even, do people even do that anymore? But uh, oh, yeah. what crack? So, yeah, <laughs> uh, I crack think so. Well, yeah. But anyway, some meth head, crackhead, drug addict, whoever you know, these these people, they they break in, and they're not generally opening the refrigerator. It's not something they're looking for. So that's that's usually a pretty good. Uh, then they got that nice weather seal on there, and you can keep the moisture out of a refrigerator. That's a pretty common diversionary yes. storage tactic. Yeah, not a bad idea. He says uh, if it was strong enough to protect Indiana Jones from a nuke. It's strong enough to hold my prize guns. That's a that's a fifties vintage fridge. They ain't like yeah. the new ones. Well, probably. also that was picture like a picture, like I always say. That was a, that was a movie. Yeah, well, that that's wasn't necessarily idea. real. If you ever dealt with one of those old refrigerators from the fifties, you could set a nuke off yeah. inside of the thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've got one in my office at the shop. I've got a like a nineteen forty seven Philco. And those things, are, those things will run forever too. Yeah. Unlike you, Walter, I wasn't a full grown man in the fifties. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I can't say much for Walter's height on just being able to see from the shoulders up, but I wouldn't say he's full grown just yet. <laughs> That's when they made refrigerators. Refrigerators. They used that real thick steel gauge with that great big handle on it. Man, you could hit it with a pickup truck, and you're not going to dent it. Yeah, yeah. ask Indiana Jones; he'll tell you. Yeah, absolutely. Brian Quick says crack is whack. Um, and then, uh, let me see who it is here. Someone says a pothead would open the fridge. Oh yeah. Joe Carpenter said potheads open the fridge. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> They've got the munchies. <laughs> dude, I'm hungry, dude. <laughs> you know, um, actually most of the time, I don't know this for a fact, but uh, I've heard that a lot of times in break in situations, people are trying to get things as fast as they can and get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah. yeah. So even if, even if things are in the, the not, you know, the, not the, the twenty thousand dollar safe that they're locked up, they'll go to the stuff that isn't locked up. You know, I've even I've even told people too, like talking about tactics for getting people out of your house as fast as possible if you're not there. If you leave out forty, fifty bucks, you know, on top of your dresser, you leave out some cash, you take some prescription pill bottles, they're empty. You put some uh, good and plenties in I don't them. Know. <laughs> just put some, just put something that rattles in there. Just something that's a pill. You don't, it could be candy, Skittles. And uh, you leave out a uh, old gun. You buy some old beater gun or something that doesn't even work, has no firing pin. It's, it's inoperable. It's no danger to anyone. It's essentially a big club. But somebody that's, that's doing that, you know, crash and grab and go smash and grab, they're going to grab that cash. They're going to grab that pill bottle. They're going to grab that gun and they're going to get out thinking they got something. And then, Lo and behold, you know, you're you're out 40, 50, 60 bucks. You know, no, not not really much danger of them hurting anybody with any of that stuff. Okay. I see where you're going with that. I yeah. think I would booby trap the gun and put like a, a electric wire there and electrocute there at no, that's that's not a good idea. In in our country, day and age, we'd probably, probably be liable for uh yeah. we'd probably still you guys, they'd probably you guys, be able to sue you. You guys have seen the videos where they they chain the bikes up, where the cable the bikes up, and people steal them and ride off and get yanked over the handlebars. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? That's gotta hurt. I've seen some of those. They'll put that yeah. twenty five foot steel Ooh. cable or rope on the back of it, and these guys are hauling butt and they're taking off. And next thing you know, face plant. Yeah. yeah, it's like don't steal. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, think twice about it, man. Yeah, um, what we need to do is everyone, uh, you know, install communist China in their houses when they're gone. So if you steal, you get arrested, and then the president has to come save you. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, well. if you just put a little lotion inside of a condom and lay that condom across your <laughs> okay. weapon, nobody okay. would ever touch it. <laughs> so it's kind okay. of kind of oozing out, you know? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> Uh, I didn't mean frankly. to go there, but, you know, people <laughs> see things you. like that, and it's like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> like an old diaper. You know, it looks kind of yellow. That too. Okay, Baby guys. diapers. Okay, yeah. enough. Pre Tim, you started this preemptive <laughs> idea thing. Okay? Lola wants us to get back on track. Okay. Um, I'm want... so sorry. I apologize. <laughs> focus. Let's focus. Keep, like some semblance of professionalism. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Okay, hey, so I, I think that's out minute, the window. I have a last-minute entry to this thing, so I can do whatever the hell I want. You know, so. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's all out of the window right now. Um, Lola wants to know what was the first product, Tim. 
the fourteen fifty, our full length mirror. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. You know what? As a matter of fact, I remember that. I think we've known. How long have you guys been in business doing this? Like four or five years? <laughs> five years now. And yeah. I think the first time we saw was at a event down in Daytona, Florida. Yes. Um. Yeah. And yeah, I remember there, doing a video on the on that mirror because I remember like doing some kind of skit where I was looking at the mirror. Yeah, we yeah, did the old like. like Patrick Smalley or Stuart Smalley. We did a Stuart Smalley SNL type bit where. Yeah, so I was like, you're beautiful. Yep. You're, you're good sexy. enough. People like you. Yeah, people like now, you. Now, are those the mirrors ones? Are those pre measured? So when you get them, you just measure between the studs and cut out and just slide in and screw it right in? It's designed to work with uh, 16 on center framing. So you've got 14 inches between studs. You got 14 and a half, but we give you a little wiggle room. So that was our first, that was our sort of flagship product our first year. And we had a full length mirror version and we had a shorter one. The idea there being you, a full length mirror is not at a place in the bedroom next to the bed. It just makes sense. So you can keep a shotgun or an AR or a full size rifle and a handgun in the bedroom. It's hidden. It's locked up. It's secure. You can get in it quick, you know, right where it is. And then the smaller mirror in our picture frame size, you could mount by a door, by a front door, back door, somewhere else in the house. So you could have a handgun somewhere else and you have your rifle in the main bedroom so and then for people who carry you know they've always got one on them anyway yeah um i definitely suggest for anyone that's uh, watching this right now to open up another window and go to tacticalwalls.com um there's also a link in the description here that you could use but if you go there you'll be able to see different things that that uh, we have going on let me see if i i don't know if um obviously tim doesn't need it but i'll put it here in the chat walter in case you want it you want to go to it and check it out or if you want to take a look at it type in but yeah so that you've got um with the mirrors there's all different categories if you go to the website and there's a bunch of different mirrors right or yeah there's mirrors. we've got our full length mirror we've got oh god my 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 computer's trying to do something here we've got the full length <laughs> mirror we've we've got a shorter mirror and uh We've got them where you can make them as a photo. You can send us a photo. We'll print it on canvas and install it if you don't want a mirror. We've got a chalkboard size and a uh, whiteboard. So cool. if, if you wanted to put, like a lot of people, the chalkboard is very popular for kitchen. And a kitchen in a lot of homes, not, not all homes, but in a lot of homes, the kitchen is the natural gathering place where people will congregate and be eating. And that's where a lot of holidays and, and fellowship happens. So... Uh, that's just a sort of natural place to keep a, a backup gun or a handgun. I mean, in our kitchen, the kitchen sink window there overlooks the driveway. So if someone's coming up the driveway, you without ever leaving the kitchen, you could be armed if need yeah. be. Right. Um, so if you guys look at the website, you'll see there's like uh, what, the mirrors are on the wall covers. You've got shelves. You've got decor stuff, uh, tables. Then you've got the mod wall and then some and then extras. So, uh, let's let's take a look at something here. So the shelves you also, I'm assuming, have lots of different sizes. This this is probably the biggest one that we have here. I think this full size. Yeah, correct. Yep. Yeah. Is that like a fireplace, Hank? Is what like a fireplace? I I really can't see a perspective. All I see is like a lip and then a weapon hanging underneath of that. Is that like a full cabinet? Is that got some depth to it? It's like a mantle. A lot of people yeah, will use it as a fireplace. So here, I'll move it up so you guys oh, okay. can get it. So if you look there, it's a shelf. I've got some instructions written on the wall there for when for the dude who installed it. But you see, I've got my uh, tactical balls. See that tactical balls up there that we we use the tactical <laughs> balls so this is a good place to keep them and i've got a skull up there and all that kind of stuff so yeah it's a shelf tyvin okay and and then what happens is if you um if you want to get in there which i've got it open right now you can just you know you just wow. push it up like that boom it folds down you can have guns in here we've got to cut this out so in the future you guys will see this all cut out and then you can have guns Store it up in there and then so you can close it. And then uh, there's two magnets. So there's one on that end and one on this end. And when you want to open it, you put the magnet on it and then that's how you open it. Wow. It's like magic. It's like magic. <laughs> well, uh, Tim, I wanted to ask you um, depending on what part of the country, is it vase or vase? Um, a lot of the homes will have the big vases. You know, they're like, I don't know, foot and a half by three, four foot tall. 
they put in the front doors or sporadically throughout the house that they'll put the big flowers. Do you guys have like a vase that would hold like an AR? We we don't. Um, we've we've talked about and had so many different people give us ideas over the years, and we really could kind of overdo it and try to do too much. And if you try to do too much, you can sort of do it, but it's very hard to do a lot and do it well. You've been into a restaurant where they've got a huge menu. Very mm -hmm. rarely are you in a restaurant that's got a huge menu and everything's delicious. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's more likely than not, if you go to the burger stand that only sells burgers and fries, they make the best burgers and fries. Right. Yep, and, that's exactly. why, and that's why everyone's going for the burgers and fries. So we try to make sure we don't get too far off into the weeds because we very easily could, could kind of lose our focus on what our core product and what our customers want. And we're, we've been in business five years. We're still a, a very, we're an infant of a company. We're a tiny company. We're still very small. I mean, there's 23, four people involved right now. And uh, there's still a whole lot of people don't even know about us. Yeah. Uh, there's, well, there's congratulations, people. though. I think when I met you, it was just you and Chris. That's it. Yeah, it's, that's it's, it's, I it's, we've really, we've grown a lot and we've moved three different times and we've bought our own facility. Now we've got a big facility now. We've got a lot of room to grow and expand even further. But we are, we're still just a small company and, and there are a lot of people that really just don't know us. And I guess the other exciting thing for me is five years ago when we got started, we didn't think of a 17 or an 18 year old as our customer. Cause like, you know, we're not going to sell the, our product. Our kids aren't our product, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, the fact of the matter is those 17, 18 year olds are now in their early twenties. Some of them have families of their own. Now they're, they're buying guns and they're buying safes and they're buying tactical walls. So uh, it's kind of neat to see the transition of, of people who we weren't necessarily targeting uh targeting now they're they're growing into our, our target demographic and um and at the end of the day it's it's really we say target demographic we we have a product if people want it i don't care what age they are i don't care what color they are i don't care what religion they are if we have something that can help somebody we'll sell it to them um, it's a good idea go, it's a good concept we're, yeah. we don't need to go out there and, and try to the, the product sells itself. The customer can either decide for themselves. Yes, they like this. We don't have to go out there and try to trick anyone into buying this thing. If it, it either works for them or it doesn't. And it works for people on a number of levels. It's got the uh, sort of sexy James Bond, uh, John Wick appeal to it, you know, for people that want right. to kind of have that cool show it off thing. It's got the practical, got to keep it hidden and locked up because I don't want the little ones finding it for the children. Or I don't want the, the people breaking and entering to find it if they break and enter. Um, or just to keep it secure and out of sight. So it's got a couple different practical applications. And then if you want to go kind of full bore, for the people who are real everyday carry, you know, disciples, and they go to, they take these training classes and they're competing in three gun and they do dry runs through their house with their weapons where they're, you know, they really live and breathe personal and home defense lifestyle then it's got real defensive applications for them to, to give them another tool for setting up uh, defensive tactics in their home. So it's, it's kind of across the board. We've, we've got a full spectrum of people. I mean, it's like cars or anything else. You've got people that are just, Oh, they have a Honda civic. <clears throat> and then you've got the guy who's got the Honda civic that's completely souped up and dragged out and everything else. Yeah, and I think one of the things you have to be careful about, especially with, you know, the, with um, there's lots of ideas and things like that that may work for one or a few people. But I th Walter always says this, you know, you can build something really cool, but if only five people buy it, it's not a good business plan. <laughs> no. yeah. So, yeah, that's the thing you have to be careful of with. Uh, where, you know. where are the mirrors on the on the Tactical Walls website? So if you go in there, um, look at look under wall covers. Okay, okay, wall covers, okay. Yeah. So there's a bunch of, what's the your most popular uh, product that you guys sell to? So our full length mirror and that full size shelf behind you are the two most popular. They kind of go back and forth, you know, one week or each month. It's just for which, which uh, works the best. The shelves, obviously the mirror requires you to cut a hole in your wall between the studs. Right. So that, that, that eliminates a lot of people who either don't have the wherewithal or the skills or the desire to cut holes in their walls or the people who are running in a, they don't own their home. They're not allowed to cut holes in the walls. 
And for that, that customer, then we've got the shelf, which is hanging up behind Hank, where it, even if you rent, you can still generally hang a shelf up on the wall. Yeah. And that, that allows more people that option. So those are the two top sellers. And it's because you can fit a full size AR with an optic and probably about two handguns in either of those. So it's, it's a good sort of starter pack. Uh, those are the two most popular. Yeah. Um, and you guys go to uh, shot show and stuff. You also do the home improvement um, shows and stuff like that. We don't, we've talked about it and it's something we could get into if we really wanted to kind of seek that out. Uh, we do SHOT Show, we do the NRA show, we do some of the bigger, the NRA does a big show in Pennsylvania, it's a big nine-day long show, outdoor. outdoor sportsman show. Yeah. And uh, and that's a good show, and it's a place for customers, they can come. They've seen it on, you know, either Pinterest or Facebook for the last five years, or they've seen it in magazines, or they've seen it on YouTube videos, like, like stuff that Hank's done in the past, but they, they don't really... Until you really see it for yourself or get to lay your hands on it, a lot of people really like to be able to see and feel the thing before they, you know, purchase. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you, so, you know, we were talking about, um, we were talking about, like, we were giving you ideas for products. What ideas or products do you guys have that you think are going to work and, and that's coming up next? Can you talk to us about uh, the future? We've had people asking us for years if we'd start making vehicle-based platforms so that they can kind of hide a firearm, you know, the whole standard under-your-seat thing. And there are a mm -hmm. couple companies out there that make a metal lockbox for under the seat. Right. Um, so that that's an area that we've sort of – we've experimented. We've built some prototypes. And uh, I'd love to be able to say, yeah, we want to be the weather tech of, of firearm concealment in vehicles. But right. we're, we're not that. We probably won't ever be that. But that was one area that sort of intrigued me because when you think about it, like where do people spend a lot of their time? You know, they spend a lot of time in their vehicles. Um, <laughs> I'm in one now. You're in one now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, uh, so so that, that's one area. And we had this natural progression where the mirror went in the wall and required more work. Then we had our shelves, which required a little less work that hung on the wall. Then we had our products like uh, our clocks and our tissue box where it's almost no, there's the, the clock takes four screws, you screw it to the wall, you're done. Um, and then we, the tissue box, you just set it down on a table and it's done. Or our tables, you've got to take it out of the box and put the legs on it, but it's done. It's very, mm -hmm. it's very low labor intensive. And if you want to move, if you buy our full length mirror and you install it in your house and then you move, you're probably, like we said with the safe, you're probably going to leave that mirror behind in the house. Yeah, and the people who buy it won't even know what the hell it is. Yeah, and actually that'll be the thing. When when the realtor is bringing them through and if you show them that it's there, that'll it's be something thing. that, oh, that's yeah. neat, cool. Good selling point. Yeah. yeah. And, aside, and aside from firearms, it's a good place to stash your stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. Jewelry whether it's and, jewelry or, you know, your stash or whatever, you know, it's a good place to. Yeah. The stash? What stash are you? I, I don't know. Can you elaborate yeah. on the stash, Walter? <laughs> he's talking, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's talking uh, Oreo cookies. If, yeah, yeah, there you go. Sure. There you go. <laughs> your, your secret recipes, you know. That's our, like that. yeah. that's our snacktical wall line. Snacktical, <laughs> snacktical. There we go. Yeah, now, cool. when you said that you, uh, you cater to, like, the in vehicle stuff, I've seen a lot of videos where guys will have them back underneath the back seat or right underneath like the passenger seat or driver's seat. I made mine to where it's screwed in to where the flap is, your sun visor, and ran across the top and then had a fold down where you could stick handguns, ARs. It's wide enough, big enough, but it's still up far enough that it's not intrusive because everybody always looks under. They never yep. look up. Yeah, that's exactly right. Do you guys offer something like no, that? No, we, we don't. But that was to answer when Hank answered the question, asked the question as far as what kind of stuff uh, people could expect from us, sort of coming going yeah. forward. That was just one area that I've we've kind of done some stuff. We we made a kit for um, the FJ, the FJ Cruisers, the Toyota little SUV. Oh, very cool. Yeah, my brother has one of those. 
and th those those are sort of a cult following type vehicle. The people yeah. that are FJ people are just yeah. they're FJ people. Yeah, it's you're gonna like, have to bury my brother in his FJ. That's not going that, anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, and you have Jeep people. So if we decided <laughs> to go vehicle, like the vehicle route, we would try to pick a popular platform that has mm. a lot of crossover with. So like Jeeps, those FJs. Yeah, Toyota, that's what gun guys. Gun guys buy a lot of those. Yeah, they Toyota buy Tundra, Toyota. Toyota yeah. Tacoma, like Forerunner. The specific I, yeah. platforms, very specific yeah. platforms that we would have to cater to. So yeah, I think and that they would be change cool. every year too. Right. Yeah. The other, now, the other, go, ahead. go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so you guys said you made some prototypes for the FJ? We did. Yeah. We, we With the, the stuff that's hanging on the wall behind you, we, we made a uh, panel that you can actually, when you open the FJ, it hinges open. The rear tailgate hinges. Right, and so on that the lower half below the window, there's a panel, so it'd be perfect yeah. for going out to the range. It'll hold a rifle, a couple handguns, yeah. yeah, cool, and have a nice little loadout. Mm -hmm. So okay. we, we we did make a little kit. We've not really done anything with it yet. Uh, we've got a guy in the shop that's got an FJ, and so he kind of did it for himself. And mm -hmm. it's 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 definitely, I think, a viable thing for that crowd if we really wanted to put together a kit and kind of go to a couple of the FJ forums online. Yeah flash some pictures out there and see how the feedback is. Yeah. I think with all the vehicles that people use to overland, you know, I think that would be a popular thing for, for people doing that because when you're overlanding, that's pretty much like your house and, and it's nice to be able to hide things away in there. Um, yeah, it's all yeah. about and, and overlanding. It's all about the efficiency of your storage because space is so limited and you want to be able to access your, your, you know, all your tools, whether it's toe straps or tie downs or bungees or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and people, yeah. people put a lot of money into those vehicles as far as souping mm -hmm. them up, get the bumpers, the suspension and everything else. Yeah. If you guys uh, decide to go into that, let me know because you know, I am doing car stuff. I'm going to just plug that real quick. Everyone knows I'm doing car stuff. We have a separate YouTube channel that we're building for the car stuff called stranger Palooza. Stranger Palooza. Yes. It's lubericious. Yeah. So, you know, and I think there's things you could do. Listen, even with pickup trucks, I mean, the beds aren't standard, you know, from the, from the different brands, but there's things you can do with pickup trucks, I think. And Walter and I were looking at not what we're talking about here, but we were looking at some stuff at uh, SEMA show. We were just at SEMA show a couple of weeks ago in this in this vein. Right, Walter? Yes, we were. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. like the... um. I like the stuff in the, like in the bed in the back or a floor in the back. Yeah, you know, like you can have drawers or something in the back yeah, right, that you right. could slide stuff out of. And, right, right. You um, know. I think there are some rules, though, about hiding things in state. I, I think Florida's even got some stuff about secret compartments, so to speak. So you kind of kind of watch that stuff. It comes from uh, from drug, drug trade. From and, drug running, yeah. And, and moonshining. The moonshine folks, yes. Yeah, so um. <laughs> Texas is bad about laws and hiding stuff and secret compartments, right? right. You know, because they're coming across the border and everything. Yeah, yeah they got they got five Mexicans in the in the glove box, you know. So you got to be, we well, got to watch that stuff. So, well, how dare you think you can do what you want to do with your own vehicle in the space that yeah, it has? That's so horrible of you. You're <laughs> you evil. Yeah. you. <laughs> No, I, uh, like you said though, once you drop the gas tank and five Mexicans roll out of the gas tank, then you know you gotta, or 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 it's full of heroin, you know, or something. No, it's like okay. yeah, yeah. So okay, yeah. let's let's move on from this. Yeah, <laughs> very gently. Uh, <laughs> tippy toe on. away from that. Yeah, right? let's move on a little bit. Okay, I did have some questions. Um, hold on, let me see here because the. The, the stuff is like scrolling out of control here. Uh, someone was asking, I think it's, um, okay, I carry my revolver in single action. That's the name. Says you you, sh you guys should make, um, start a fireproof line. He knows it'll cost more money though. Have you ever thought about the fireproof line? That's, we, we haven't, and I mean, we thought about it, but the reason we haven't pursued that is to, to make fireproof fire rating, it's, it's, it's insulation. In order yeah. to really make something and protect it from fire, you need insulation. Insulation takes space. Yeah. So we make it makes really, a, lot, a lot makes a lot of weight too. It makes a lot of weight, but it, it just a lot of our things are very sleek and small, and and to try to fireproof them would make them much larger. And if they're really large, then it defeats the purpose. It it kind of doesn't make them look so inconspicuous anymore. Right. Right. Kind of you know when your when your tissue box looks like a. Uh, 
a, a, a safe sitting on top of your uh, thing. It's like, eh, <laughs> well, it, it, it goes back to the whole thing of there are people for sure, like like that particular person. If we made one, they may buy it. And there, yeah. but if there's only five or six or ten guys, so it's it's kind of we're we're going more for what is the middle of the road kind of most most universal looks good well made that will will reach the most people and answer the most people's questions is sort of where we've gone for yeah there's, also, I, there's also a price yeah. point for everything too right I mean, right too expensive people go yeah you know i don't need that huh? yeah but maybe the technology will come along a little bit here because you know tim tim's right that to make something fireproof takes all that space then it just depends like you know where does technology go as we go forward yeah, I don't yeah. know if it's going to make leaps and bounds where we can get fireproofing down to something very thin. And I know that if you if if you go watch a lot of the videos, and there's there's a plethora of research on this from, and and a lot of good safe companies will even do comparison for a cheaper safe company to show you what the difference in their product is and and what the fire rating is. And I was talking to a, a safe salesman in uh, Alabama. He sells tons of safes, all different kinds, and he was explaining that some of those things are fire rated and they've had houses burned down and when you open the safe door up the fire you know at the after the fire is all said and done it was so hot inside the safe that documents were still charred were still burnt because it turns it into an oven so mm -hmm. even though it's got insulation if it's a hot enough blaze it gets in there and he said it just cases, cooks everything <clears throat> yeah in cases where even the the wooden stocks on rifles were just smoldered you know and all the metal stuff is there all your barrels are there but all the other stuff and anything anything with plastic furniture forget yeah. about it you know it's yeah. just a puddle at the bottom of the safe so yeah. well that's why there's a time rating on those things right i mean if it's going to burn for an hour or a few hours but if maybe if it burned for five minutes ten minutes twenty i don't know i think the what does it go up to like 30 or something there's there's a whole there's a whole big rating system for that stuff and and that's where for us it just seemed like okay this is this is us getting way too far away from what our core product line is mm -hmm. and and where we're just not ready for that same thing with technology people want to know about you know biometric are you going to do anything with fingerprints are you going to do anything with iris and retina scanners and <laughs> not, not really because i mean that stuff's expensive and in order to do it well it, it's got to work like apple can do it because they can dump a billion dollars into a fingerprint and facial recognition software yeah. i mean we're not going to mess with that well i've got one for you when are you going to build a robot dog who defends my property with machine guns <laughs> <laughs> you know, automatically. <laughs> that's, that's what you need to do right there. <laughs> you got them goats, did, man. I, Just put put a gun on back of them goats. You know that. Oh, sure. Right. Oh, goat. Is that what the Taliban does? Daddy, 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 daddy. <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, gorillas and guns wants to know. Uh, he wants to know if you said anything about um, something for the back of your front door. You for guys. the back as far as like we've had people request um like a ballistic plate or a panel even to mm -hmm. where you if if you answer the front door and someone's got a gun and they're standing on the other side mm -hmm. um and i'm not sure if he's talking about that or storing something on the back of the yeah, front he door. might be talking about storing but that's a good idea also I both think. both ideas yeah because yeah, some people cause... will knock on the door you come there boom blast through the door yeah you know yeah. Uh, I've I've had a person ask me about it. We we could easily make something for the back of the front door, but it's got to be big enough to accommodate and house a rifle. It's got to be three inches wide in order to accommodate a rifle. You know, it's going to have to be a box attached to the back of the door. We we have done some stuff with. Uh, it's never been commercially known, but we've we've done some stuff with ballistic fiberglass panels, uh, but. Those are graded for handgun cartridges, like up to 44 mag, I think. Yeah. But I mean, sometimes the better thing would be maybe even to make like the whole door. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and you can buy yeah. those like really hardened doors. They sell those things, but you're not supposed to be able to kick them in and all that. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. as far as making it for the back of an existing one as a retrofit, if, I mean, if you can buy a, a small uh, ballistic panel that's maybe only rated for handgun cartridges, well, considering that most most firearm crime is committed with handguns mm -hmm. it seems like that would be a pretty good option 
because it would allow you maybe to answer the door or stand on one side of it. And if they do have bad intentions, you know, they're not getting through the door. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. You also, I had, take, I had, you also you have to take in consideration the depth of a door because if it's hinged in a certain way and you go to open a door, you don't want your box or your stuff to end up not letting the door open. The whole way, right. Right, right, right. So. Yeah. I, I had another quick question. Now, um, on the model, like Hank's got right behind him, as it comes down, do you guys have any type of light, like a, a slow dim into a just enough where you can see to grab your weapon, Will it be like battery operated? Do you have we've any got, type of like lighting on that? We've got a battery operated uh, LED that, but it, it comes on. It just boom, it comes on. Just so, on. and it's just a white LED light, but you could put a red filter in it. If you wanted to have it a, a, a less intense light, if it was dark, uh, and the one we have, it's an add-on. It, it's not wired in, but you could probably get on Amazon and find like a soft on, soft off LED sensor light. And you know that's okay. something we could even look to carry as an accessory or aftermarket. We've had people ask about uh, a not so a bright one, but we the thing is, we just tell them use a filter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then just one, one question and then we're going to go off and do some other stuff. And obviously we'll come back. We'll be talking about this and uh, we can always get Tim to come on in the future if we haven't just totally uh, scared him. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I would for sure come back. And I, like I said, I would have, I would have been at the shop today and I'd have had a nice backdrop with some guns and stuff in it probably. Um, but having some friends coming over, we had to, we had to come home. Yeah. So, no, this well, is I'll, good. It's good. Well, for sure, yeah. I'll be back again. Yeah, we're getting lots of good info. Uh, folks out there want to know, would you sell the hardware to build so people can build their own things? Like if people wanted to build some custom things. We, we haven't in the past mm -hmm. just because that would essentially work to putting us out of business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sort of. Like, you. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess, I mean, we, 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 we could, yeah, but if they really, want, if they were really that, uh, if those people are really that into it, they can look at our stuff, see how it's made, and they can go find the hardware themselves and build it. You know, I don't yeah. have time for that. I, you got the right product. If I yeah. see where it's, it fits, I call, I order, it's delivered, I it's, hang it's, it, hey, I listen, put it I, in, and I'm done. I get it because I'm that guy too. I'm yeah. the person that's like, I'm not going to buy that. I'll make my own. You know, and, and it, <laughs> it always starts that way. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> and at the end of the day, like, I mean, I've got a sewing machine in the house, but I still like to just go buy a pair of jeans when I need them. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, because there's going to be lots of projects. If 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 I had to make my pants, I'll be walking around like with my underwear on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, and I mean, it's it's that 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 concept does work though, uh, and I can always tell when we're at like an NRA show. I can always tell who the woodworkers are because they start looking at our product. And they're over there stroking their chin and they're down <laughs> on their knee looking up underneath from the bottom and they're they're like making mental calculations in their head and so you already know who's gonna build and and I mean there's something to be said for that too. Like if you really do want to make your own, like make your own, make it your own, make it totally custom for your needs. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's like a burger. You can get a decent burger at a at a fast food joint, but you really want a good burger, you make your own. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I see okay. some folks talking about like um, I see in 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 the chat there's some folks talking about you know they they carry in the house which I do um, you know and, and and there's different things like that going on I think that you know that one that's a good thing to do to carry in the house I do it but it's all but there's lots of folks including me that would like to leave different things around different parts of the house well I do it too I mean I carry in the house and there's uh, there's also situations and scenarios where maybe that would be an okay thing if someone caught you off guard and they got you or they got your gun and they think they're they're now um you've kind of mentally you've kind of mentally disarmed them because they think that they're in control because they've got your gun mm -hmm. but uh, but here you go boom you've got something else right next to the the couch or something in the tissue box um, See, i'm that type of person no matter where i'm at in my house i don't carry in my house but no matter where I'm at, I've got something with arm reach of grabbing. That's why I really like your product because I can extend my arsenal throughout without anybody even knowing. Well, and the thing too with that is if you're, I don't know, you're, you're, someone breaks into your house, they round up your whole family or, you know, you're not even there, but whoever's at your house, your, your family, your kids, your wife, 
um, they round them up and they try to put them in the guest room. They try to lock them and contain them into one area. But if that person locks them into an area where there's guns that are hidden, yeah, they're in trouble. <laughs> then great. Surprise! 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Or if, or if, you know, you, they, even if it's just the couch, if they tell you, hey, get in the living room, sit on the couch, <laughs> everyone sit on the couch, you know, and if, if you're crying and you ask if can, you can have a tissue, if you can reach, can I just, you're reaching onto the coffee table to grab a tissue. Well, right under the tissue box, there's a handgun. Yeah. Uh, so, make them fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, I think, uh, Chris B who said that said he was talking about when you like go to the front door, you know, usually have something, but you know, sometimes look, I've seen videos of multiple people going into a house, right? So if you, if typically if you carry something around the house with you, it might be lighter weight, not as much capacity or something like that. There's lots of different reasons here why you'd want to do this. I'm not trying to make anyone do it, but I think, um, I know lots of people. I'm like that too. I like to have things around, and um, yes, it's true. You can never have enough safes. You also don't want everything in the safe. No, no. And your other thing too is, and it's very, very statistically almost an impossibility that the average person is ever going to be in a gun shoot uh, or a shootout in their house. You know, it's it's very tiny, but it but but it's still a real possibility for those people who are that statistic anomaly. Um, fire, uh, law enforcement, military. Their primary weapon in those situations is a rifle. It's a carbine. You know, it's that's really what you want. The handgun is to fight your way to your rifle. Like that's yes. that's that's what you want. Like you want the rifle, and it's like this this a uh, terrible thing that happened in Texas. Uh, the the bad guy had a rifle. Well, mm -hmm. the good guy had a rifle too. But his wasn't and, loaded up and and really ready to go. But he did, no, he did that, get out there. He got there, but and that was the thing. I watched the interview, I guess, where he was with Crowder, and he was telling Stephen Crowder about his, his going through it, and he, he got in his safe, and he got it out. But as soon as he said, you know, he started to load it, I, I kind of, oh, man, that, that stinks, just because you know how much time that takes. And, yeah. and you know, it, it, to, to have – if it's all there together anyway, if, it, if, the, if the ammo is next to the magazine and it's next to the gun, well, then – you might as well have had the ammo in the magazine. You Absolutely, know? and the gun loaded. So, <laughs> so well, they said right there at the end when they all when that guy finally stopped and he was looking at him, trying to get out of the vehicle. He only had two bullets left. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's a that's the whole the whole rifle thing. Well, who needs who needs thirty rounds? You know. Uh, yeah, I need I need a cajillion. <laughs> yeah, I need those self reloading rounds like you see in the movies that just uh, come out of the <laughs> sides of something and just automatically load in. You yeah, know? You, so you and being that you're getting into cars, you probably got a car that's got like a sixty seven speed transmission that just keeps up shifting. Yeah, like in the <laughs> in the chasing. I'm sure they sell that yeah. at SEMA. But that's another, you know, and I think that's another thing. You know, there's it's more than just guns that you can have um, around the house. You can have magazines backup magazines yeah. to things and all that. Lots of people do it. I, I know I do it. And I think that there's other people out there that do it, but there's, and there's other purposes for what's, you know, for what we have going on here. Also, like I know some people live alone and they don't have too many people coming over there, but if you don't live alone and, or you have people coming over to this drives Lola crazy. Cause you know, people come to the house and there are guns around cause this is what I do. <laughs> Right. So there's always guns around somewhere and she's like, okay, <laughs> you know, I'm not buying you another safe right now. So I think like it's a, it's a, you know, it's a cheaper alternative. Obviously it still costs money, but it's an alternative where you could put, put up something nice, have that gun or a couple of guns hidden over there, have some guns over here. We, we, we like know. to say that we're a supplement or a complement to a safe. And we tell, if you can afford a safe, by all means, you should buy a safe. You should buy a very high quality safe. You should do your research and find out what is going to suit your needs the best and for sure buy a safe. But just understand that that safe is designed to, to keep your collection safe, whereas our products are designed more to help keep you safe. Yeah. Now, one more. I know, <clears throat> I know it's probably getting annoying with us all interjecting our ideas. How about like a shower caddy one? Shower. Hey, we <laughs> Listen, yeah. we've got uh, <laughs> we've got people. We we sell that. Uh, we have a Hida mag. It's a it's a little high strength magnet, and mm -hmm. it's really it's not really. Meant, that, you've is, got is one, one of those there. Yeah, and, yeah. Is that this thing? That's well. That's there's two of them, and that's what's on the. So the this goes on the on the tactical wall. The the man the the mod wall, but that the yeah, thing the in the middle wall, there. 
-hmm. Yep. If you twist that apart, and you'll be able to show the camera there. Oh, there you go. Oh, these are actually two. Just watch your fingers. <laughs> watch your fingers, because yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah, because they will they will do this to you. Oh yeah. So. Just got my uh, yeah. Don't worry, I'm yeah. okay. So so anyway, that little piece there, there that says go. tactical walls with the two screws mm -hmm. in it. Right. That's that's designed that you can hide that wherever. So um, okay. We have people, and it, it, you can hide it or you can leave it in the open. Oh, I see what this is. Okay, so you can hide these somewhere, and then you can magnetize your guns on it. Yeah, and so we'll have okay. people who might keep one of them next to the toilet. When you conceal carry or whatever, you go into the right. bathroom, you pop it on there. But we've had people put those, mount them in showers. And, you know, and they some people will say, well, I don't want my gun getting wet. You know, and other people will say, well, I don't want to be laying in a pool of my own blood. Right, so, exactly, exactly. Um, and, if, and in my case, like I carry a, a Glock. I mean, I'm not jumping in the shower with it, but I wouldn't have any problems taking it in the shower if I really felt like I needed it. Right. I mean, it's not some, it's not something you want to do on a every time you go in there because the gun is going to take a it's going to take a toll on any firearm. So, oh yeah, period. eventually, yeah, eventually. You know, it'll try, get try, look at look at women's jewelry that wear them in the shower all the time. They're full of caked with gook. You know, yeah. like, shampoo, hair. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's not a, it's not a gun. Besides, the ammunition doesn't like that shit either. So, so yeah, I mean, you're only going to go so long before it goes click. Well, if there was a way to have something that was waterproof. Or something like that. Well, and then if when you, you want to you do that, a little you, small gun. You almost need to have a. And you know, here's another thing here. Basically, you just need a cover that goes to the top, lets the water go over it. Yeah. And not, not be in direct contact with the firearm. Yeah. It's something you can just lift up quick and get it out. Yeah, that it's really, like sealed. Mm -hmm. If you really, really wanted to, though, one of those little uh, clear plastic cases, like you take in a canoe with your cell phone. Yeah, you can right, do that. Yeah. Too. Yeah, yeah. Just you stick can... it in a Ziploc bag and hang it off the shower curtain. <laughs> no, I want, it's I want it's like we're on the soap on a rope. Just keep I it want an elaborate <laughs> I want an elaborate solution actually, to this. Actually, I don't want to MacGyver it. You can attach your soap to the bag and you can rub your Glock all over you all the time. Just oh like, my god. And I thought I was bad earlier. He did no. say rub his you rub your Glock earlier. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Stroke your Glock and it'll take care of you, you know? Listen, I want something fancy that I could show off because then I could bring people in the bathroom and go, All right, spray paint this... it gold then, my friend. Okay. Well, okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I would totally, I would do that. <laughs> Problem solved. There you go. Yeah. Gold. I like gold. Gold and shit. Yeah. Yeah. We could we could harass him for hours with so all kinds that's of That's an interesting uh, gold gold member. I gold. mean it's, <laughs> it seems like good it one. It seems like gold if, member. Uh, if you cross that guy with Donald Trump, because all of his stuff is gold. Like every he loves gold. His everything is gold. The curtains and all of the accoutrements in Air Force One is gold. So he's like uh -huh. The uh, the American his gold hair burger. is gold. gold one, really? <laughs> no, it's yeah. his special it's recipe like a rose gold. chicken crust from KFC is gold flaked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we could come up with uh, crazy ideas. Um, now, one of the things that Lola wanted me to ask about, I think you alluded to it earlier with uh, Chris being out uh, doing some stuff. Can we expect to actually go into stores like Cabela's and buy these soon? Or so, yeah, Cabela's, soon? We've, we've been working with Cabela's for the last year or so. We've been on their website, but um, we're in 12 or 13 stores now. We've got displays out there, and Chris is doing this tour. He's, he's going out. Uh, he's helping get them set up in the store. He's helping get the, the sales staff trained so that they're knowledgeable about the product. So mm -hmm. yeah, you'll, you'll be able to go to maybe your local Cabela's. I mean, we're only in a, a very small portion of them for now, but the idea would be to grow that program to where we'd be in every Cabela's, you oh. know, and Bass Pro just bought Cabela's. So, yeah, so, so big hopefully, time, big time. hopefully over time, we'd be able to have displays in Bass Pro as well. I mean, that's something that they'll have to decide because those are definitely separate, separate brands and how they want to want to proceed with that. Obviously, we would love for them to pick it up in both, you know, Bass Pro and Cabela's. But, yeah, this is something now that people will be able to, to see in a more local fashion to, to lay hands on it. Yeah. Are you listed on Brownells? Brownells carries some of our stuff, I believe. But not okay. everything. Okay. And that's that's just a, a function of uh, some of our products are kind of bulky. Well, and, yeah, and, and they're not like, you know, when you're talking about furniture, basically. Yeah, you exactly. You, go, you look at the Brownells catalog for furniture. Well, and, yeah, and so much, I've, so. I've been out to Brownells facility 
and it is amazing. It is a great place. And, and there's just racks upon racks and shelves of, of all these really nice, neat little bins. You know, this bin might have a whole bunch of uh, just e extractors. And this bin might have a whole bunch of bolt groups. And this bin has a whole bunch of pistol grips. And uh, our, we wouldn't even be able to have a bin. We'd need, like, two whole racks <laughs> of space. Well, yeah, that's why that little bin holds the whole inventory of those extractors that Brownells has. Yeah, yeah exactly. you need those Costco or Sam's Club type of deals. But their facility is is, yeah. is is something to behold for sure. Yeah, I've never seen it, but we would like to go there. We were talking the other day yeah. about doing a rally to Brownells, which I'm working on. Well, maybe we'll, we'll probably do it sometime next year. We'll the gun ball drive rally. Out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe you guys can um, come hang out with us up there when we do it, Tim. Yeah, well, they're they're far from. I mean, they're in Iowa, so it's yeah. kind of far from us. But yeah, yeah. they're right in between uh, Cedar Rapids and Des Moines. Yeah. What are you doing, I eighty? Yeah. I know. I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah, what's, the, what's, the there, what's the interstate there, Tyvin? What's the? Do what now? I didn't hear you. What's no, the interstate? It's, it's on I eighty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I figured you know because that's your business, you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? It's a huge place. Yes, it's absolute. From what I hear, it's pretty big, and um, you know, I'm. I think that'll be a cool deal if we do that to go hang out there. Now, let me ask you this, Tim. Before I forget, uh, do you guys have any Black Friday sales coming up? We are going to be doing something. I don't know what exactly we're we're doing for Black Friday. We we've, we've tried uh, through the years to not hold sales because we have dealers, and we don't. You know, we don't want to be competing with our dealers. Right. But there are certain times in the year where it's pretty much understood that everyone does a sale. Okay. Um, Black Friday is one of those. So I don't know what that special will be for Black Friday, but um, we will have something. I don't yeah, know. What keep the, us, let us know because we're going to have um, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. We are going to have a, uh, so like 24 hours before Thanksgiving, we're going to have a show and we're just going to talk about Black Friday sales on that day. So, okay. You know, yeah. um, I invite everyone to tune in then, and we'll we'll check with Tactical Walls and see what they have going on at that yeah. time. Discount so, you know, Hump Day. Yeah, so you know what? Let's uh, switch gears here a little bit. We'll definitely come back and talk about stuff. I want to ask Tim exactly what this is. Don't say right now. <laughs> That's for the shower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't uh, get him going again. What exactly do you do with it in the shower, right? So, uh, oh, dear. Oh, it's no, it's no, like no, a no. certain amount of things that you would do with this bad boy. What you going to mount with that thing, you know? <laughs> so, anyway. I don't know. That thing's got threads on it. That might hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that panel behind you, you can either feed that in in a vertical fashion where it goes in uh, – there's two little circular holes there. If you look behind you, there's a rifle with a flashlight on it, or even right yes. there, wherever. Yeah. Is that a can barrel holder? Yeah. It, so you could make it be a barrel holder if you put it in and slide it in the groove that way. Yeah. Or yeah. if you put it in the other direction where it's uh, horizontal, Oh, I see. you can use it for holding a flashlight or oh, so any kind of a tool. Way. Okay. Yeah, but you'd have to feed it in from the end. From the beginning. Okay, I see. Do you make magazine holders that you can slide on your wall where you can put yes. a 346 or a D60 uh, 60 round mag holder? We've got some shelves, I think, that you could do that stuff on, set it on. But uh, Yeah, and then we, you've got these. These are for the handguns. Those are for going up into a pistol, mag well yeah. a pistol. Um, and then you've got, like, right there, I've got the AR, the AR magazine type thing that's holding this one. And this one's an AK type. Yeah. You know, so... There's lots of different things. I mean, there's um, there's lots of potential. Product, there. man. I've I've done a lot of serious consideration in using your products. Yeah, you know, I really like it. They're very innovative. Yeah, go ahead. What happened to Tyvin? That was a. I, I'm here. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> it's I just heard <laughs> innovative, and then everyone went. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Don't move, I really don't move. I really like your product, and I was really intrigued when I saw some of the videos. Uh, from years ago on YouTube where you guys was at SHOT Show and did different stuff. And I was like, man, this is a great opportunity that I can put guns throughout the rest of the house. See, my thought is a safe only keeps a honest person honest and keeps guns out of your kids' hands. And, you know, you can get into a safe real fast if you've got the proper tools. But with your products, I can keep them distributed so it's not all in one spot. 
Yeah, you're just you're distributing it out. You're not putting all your nuts in one basket in that case. <laughs> oh, okay. So now uh, let me use that as a segue, talking about the proper tools and keeping all your nuts in one basket. I just want to use that. Are going to segue into balls or something? Yeah, I just want to segue into talking about some uh, some stuff that's going on in the news. So I don't know if you guys have news things you want to talk about. If you do, gather it all up right now. If you folks listening in on the chat have some news things, gather it up and we'll we'll talk about it. Also, don't forget to click the thumbs up and share this video. But um, what I saw in the news that I thought was interesting, talking about like nuts in the basket and proper tools, Terry Crews. Do you guys know Terry Crews? Yeah. Was he sexually harassed also? I think he said he yeah. was. Wasn't that he? was the uh, black actor, the muscle-bound dude who's always yeah. like doing the jiggly thing with his... President, Listen, it's President Camacho. Let's not... Yes, let's there you not... go. Yes, amen. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, what is he like? Uh, in, in that time, it would be probably something like 60-something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? um, but anyway, so he said that he was... Uh, he was groped by a Hollywood executive, and I think today he actually came out and named the executive. Oh, who is it then? Who That's good. It? That's yeah. good. I'd say good on him because I remember when he, when he announced. I mean, it's been what a month now since he first came out and said that he was at a party with his wife and that he was groped, and yeah, and he understood though that if he really can't speak out, because if he speaks out, then there goes his career or whatever. And I don't agree with that because. Uh, that's not now with all the stuff that's coming out he'd be well, great I mean, with the me too with the me too movement going on i guess the thing well, is yeah, if, if you're gonna say it happened you gotta name it you gotta name the yeah, person yeah. too yeah and, yeah. and, and, and if and if terry cruz god if terry cruz isn't big enough and strong enough and brave enough to lead and tell the people and name the name then god who is how could we expect anybody to well i mean who the hell is brave enough to go grab a, lucky a, he didn't get a big a, beat down I mean, that's on a big head. dude that's <laughs> You know, there's a there's a time for bigging your mouth shut, and there's a time for punching his teeth out. You know? Well, I, so here's well, the here's, no, here's, the, here's my theory nice on that. Nice guy, right? He's here's my theory on that. Presumably, the person that did this to him was probably older than him, a little higher up the food chain. You know, as far as producer wise goes. Yeah, so it was actually a pretty big. It was someone that's really big in Hollywood. Uh, let me see. I'm going to tell you guys the name right now. Um, Adam Venet. And but he's the head of the motion. Anything, yeah. Well, he's the head of the motion picture department at William Morris Endeavor, which is one of the biggest agencies in the whole world. How old uh, is this guy? Um, I don't know how old. Well, when did this happen? happen? Yeah, um, he doesn't. He doesn't look. He looks like he's probably like around Terry Crews's age. You know, because um, I guess my 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 take on it is if if he's that bold, that emboldened. It's obviously not just it wasn't just a fluke anomaly. This was his first right. time doing this. And he's probably a weirdo anyway. He felt so. very comfortable doing it, you know, and, and thought it would just be brushed off as a joke as it probably had been umpteen times before, which then, you know, begs the question, who else, you know, who else is out there that hasn't, you know, brought it up and how long has it been going on and from what age well, did this start? But Oh yeah, this has been going on in Hollywood for a long time. I mean, James Dean you know, believe it yeah, or not, yeah. I know people don't want to hear this because there's lots of James Dean fans out there that he think was he was gay. real macho. But yeah, James Dean was gay, and there were Hollywood executives that you know he had to do the casting couch thing with dudes. Yeah, you know, to yeah. get into movies, and it's terrible. But it's always on you as a, it's always on you as a man to to hold up you know to hold up your own honor and uh, decide yeah. what you're willing to do for money, and you shouldn't be willing to do anything. I'm guess, sorry, but nobody's doing that three finger fondle. That, that ain't happening, dude. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how many. I don't know how many offers. Well, okay, let's, the three, let, three let, let's also remember that some of these, <coughs> some of these folks have made hundreds of millions of dollars. So, and now they decide to come out and accuse everybody of touching everybody. It's 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 like an epidemic now. Everybody's been sexually harassed. <laughs> well, you say that, Walter. There's a thing going on in the news right now. That this big Me Too movement that's going on, there's a bunch of governors and senators that are about ready to get exposed with all this stuff that's going on with that Alabama uh, judge yeah, that's yeah, running yeah, down there. Yeah. There's a bunch of people right now that's scared over in the Senate and everything because there's going to be a big outbreak of all of this now. Wait, at what point does it become like like everybody screaming racism every time you disagree with somebody? After a while, you're going to go, okay, and? 
Yeah, well, listen, that's just and, the way that we are. That's us as human beings that we right, do I mean, that. I mean, we we hyper-focus on something, if you, and then everyone comes out of the, the closet. Right. So 40 years ago, moment. somebody did something to you. Well, what took you 40 years to, to come out and say something? It all started when a Mustang ranch went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's even in, in, in politics. It's not and, anything and in 40 new. years, there's no, there's nothing you can do. There's no... St- the statute of limitations are gone. You can't. So you're just doing it to, well, make yourself feel better. Or maybe you're going like when everybody was accusing Trump of, of, of sexual this and that. They all went away as soon as the election because somebody stopped paying them probably. So that's just yeah. I'll leave it. Well, at that. It's all good. It's all listen. It's all good if it's bringing down the people on the opposite side of what you right. agree with. Right, I guess right, it's right. probably not so good if it's bringing down we're, we're, the people that you do agree with. At the end of the day, though, it shouldn't happen. But and, and lots of people are in positions where they don't feel like they have the, the I mean, the really disgusting thing is when you look at what happened to these young gymnasts and stuff like that. You know, they are kids. That's the worst one is the gymnasium, yeah. the Olympics kid that, as, as minors. Yes. But once you're a full on 20 something year old woman and you're letting it happen to yourself, you're just as guilty. Right. For Thank not you. saying anything. And you get paid millions and millions of dollars afterwards. Now you're crying about it. Sorry. Not getting no sympathy from me. Sorry. Hey, can I ask real quick? Uh, we haven't had any gun corn. Porn? Oh, corn. Oh, did you corn. say gun, gun corn or gun yeah? Corn? I corn. thought you guys agree. I thought you guys agreed to say call it corn instead of oh, porn. Corn. Oh, is that what I, I forgot? I forgot about that. Was it corn? Is corn the code word? <laughs> yes. We have to get a different code word now. All right. This will make you puke that, but here you go. Sorry, Tim, sorry, Tim but I yeah. usually like to see yeah, we, my gun corn before within the first 15 minutes of the well, podcast. First of all, Lola saying we cut off Tim. We didn't let him finish his thought. Go ahead, Tim. I'm sorry, Tim. I apologize. Oh, no, yeah. I think I was talking about – we were talking about politics, and it's nothing new. I mean, we have what, Dennis Hasertat there? Hasertat? I'm not sure if I'm even saying that right. Hasker? Yeah, is it Hasker? Hasker, yeah. And he was he was what? In uh, the Speaker of the House or uh, – he was a big. He was a he big was, he was speaker, buck. right? He was. Right. He was up like there. there. He was yeah. up there somewhere. And then, uh, what was the? Uh, it happened back in the eighties. There was this huge like male prostitution ring with the orphanage. Oh my God. <laughs> but the funny part is nine yeah, times out of, nine times out of ten, uh, when okay, we're gonna go politics here. No, when it when it fine. happens to a Republican, you're supposed to just stop what you're doing and quit and get out of the way. When it happens with a Democrat, they're like. Well, that's just that's just the way it is. Well, we can. I mean, if we can, I we mean, can. That's, you, that's like Bill Clinton. It was just he was just the way he is. You know, you I mean, can make it vanilla and take the politics out of it entirely, or you can even throw it to the other side of the pond with like Jimmy Seville, Jimmy Seville, whatever that guy's name was. Well, You're talking six, seven years ago. It, it, none of this stuff came out until he was dead and gone. Right? Like they didn't <laughs> want to tarnish him while he was alive, I guess. And he was sort of the sacrificial lamb for that whole crazy pedophile children's hospital and all the stuff that he was involved in. But that guy went to Buckingham palace, you know, and he hung out with the Prince and Prince Charles and, you know, went on vacation with the Royals and everything else. Okay. Well, you don't, you don't get into Buckingham palace without them knowing your background. Uh-huh. You know, well, you would hope. Oh, you would, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so yeah. there, it's, there's, there's, it's it's it transcends any political party but like you're saying yeah, why why do they want to bring it up 40 years later for the simple fact that like look what it's doing to that guy's campaign he's you know down there running for whatever he is yeah and well, uh, and he's not the favorite he's not the favorite boy with the republicans so the republicans are after him too yeah yeah. Also, I think it transcends. I think it transcends um, uh, parties. I think it also transcends sex. I think you're gonna see. You know, even if the fix for this, I think this whole thing started with Fox News, right? Like all the stuff coming out from Fox yeah, News, all the yeah. dudes over there who were doing stuff. And even if this, let's say Fox News went all female, you're gonna see stuff coming out. They sexually harassed just as much as the guys. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing things coming out about uh, with, like women in power that we're doing. They do like the this same well. stuff. Man. They do the exact same I know. stuff. I know. You know, you're expected to be their little boy too when when they want yeah. you. The, the the thing about it is, as dudes, we often don't complain about that. <laughs> well, okay, okay, maybe if we, we it's think like that's a not like girl, we, but are you gonna yeah. complain when it's a 75 year old woman that wants a little action? You know, I mean, I don't know. 
Uh, well, I, I, well, I can see it now. Walter's going to be 70 years old running around the old folks home with a bag of Viagra. Hey, baby. Yeah. Um, hey, anyway. anyway. <laughs> Any unwanted attention is bad. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm going to come out for the Me Too movement Me and too. just say that Walter has sexually assaulted lots of my guns. <laughs> he, knows, he knows he's done it. Oh, the guns, yeah. I do those guns all the time, yeah. <laughs> Give him the pinky, you know. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know what? It's uh, it's a weird thing, man. Like it, it's so weird how we are. We get stuck. Look at how we got stuck on the Russia thing. Like it really means something. Oh, like Russia that... hasn't tried to uh, influence America's politics or politics around the world forever, or America hasn't influenced other countries' politics. For well, I got a real good example of that. I just saw a headline earlier. Did you see where there's a slave trade? I mean, there's slave trade still goes on around Tons the world. Go. Right. But really? did you see the did you see the new video from Libya? No. Uh, not, uh, not that not that there wasn't possibly slave trade going on in Libya beforehand, right. but Libya was a fairly stable place under yeah, Gaddafi. You, you could you could go visit there and go to the beach and stuff when he would give or stuff. take. Like and and the Libyans were they were fairly unified behind Gaddafi. Yeah. It's it wasn't quite as like Syria. The picture of Syria has been painted with uh, Assad. But um, we we went in there and changed that. You know, oh, we um, got him out of there. We came, we saw he died. Ha ha ha. ha. Arab, Spring, Arab Spring, Obama yeah. Arab Spring. Yeah. So it's. I mean, we we control stuff, and we we control and manipulate and try to influence as best we can other elections as well. And I'm not saying that whether the Russians did or didn't. I think like they Van Jones did. probably had it right when he said it was a big fat nothing burger. And right. they just continue to talk about it for as long as they have. And we're still talking about it because Donald Trump Jr. tweeted this or John, Donald Trump you know, Jr. met with an attorney. It's a, di it's a diversion to divert yeah. attention so, away from the real so culture. Here's the, here's the thing that, that, um, that Tim's talking about for anyone who doesn't know. I'm just, I just pulled it up on CNN. It says, people for sale where lives are auctioned for $400. 800 says the auctioneer, 900, 1,000, 1,100. Yeah. Sold for twelve hundred Libyan uh, dinars, the equivalent of eight hundred dollars. Not a used car, a piece of land, or an item of furniture. Not merchandise at all, but two human beings. One of the un unidentified men being sold in the grainy cell phone vid video obtained by CNN is Nigerian. Yeah, he so appears to be in his twenties and is wearing a pale shirt and sweatpants. So let's make this clear too: the Arabs do not like people of different color. And, and and that's who they sell and trade and buy. They don't trade themselves. They trade. Absolutely, but that's gone on. That's never culture. stopped. That, that that's that, always that, been the same. It's nothing new there. Yeah, in history, that's part they of their stopped. culture. That's a way of life over there. That's not acceptable in the U.S. That's why a lot of U.S. citizens can't understand. Yeah, that's wrong, but that's the way they do. I mean, they just allowed uh, female to drive cars over there <laughs> in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. real, but we, and and uh, we've allowed all this stuff to go on just so we can have access to oil and, and other oh, things like that. And yeah. it's, uh, you know, there's people out there that say they're against all these things. There's people that worry about things that happen in America. And obviously things happened here in America and it was, it was well, whatever it was and it was terrible, but it's well, still going on in the world. You know, when they're, this, when they're throwing gay guys off the roof of buildings and the gay people here are not, are not upset about it. Are they are they're still they're still welcoming all the immigrants that would throw them off the building? Yeah, yep. yeah that's a death penalty over there, and they don't yeah. they don't even understand that. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Well, I think that like we we you said that that's their culture, and you know we're not allowed to, and we shouldn't be attacking anyone else's culture per se. Obviously, if they're doing very horrific things, then yeah, you should certainly attack those yeah. you glaring inconsistencies and inhumane things. Uh, there was a time where our culture in our country, you know, wasn't the best either, but it, it's changed and we've changed, you know, and we've, right. we've fought our own wars for that to get beyond that. And we right. get ourselves so, you know, it's tied down in the mire and the mud and the muck of, of what was here a long time ago. And, Let's, and we've, and it's like, we've moved on from that. Obviously like we didn't, we didn't start that or invent that, but we damn sure did end it. Yeah, and, you know. and at the same time, here you go. You just like you just said. Now we're looking the other way for some of the other, these other cultures that are coming here that do things like you know mutilate the female sex organs and kill the. Well, that's know, it. And we're it's, supposed to, we're supposed to be like, oh, well, that's the way they are. 
in What's France, that? that's just, not the uh, that's not the way it is. Sorry. In France, they just um, that's not the a court in France just <laughs> look the other way or kind of let two two guys off, two adult men off, because uh, the age of consent. And in France now, they're looking to change the age of consent. I think to thirteen, because wow. in this particular case, they were eleven and twelve year old, but they didn't. Wow. In the article, in the article, they're gonna they're they gonna get they're gonna get the, it, uh, they're gonna sow they're gonna reap what they sow. In the article, they didn't list the the nationality of the uh, of the offenders. Wow! Um, because to, to because it doesn't fit the specific narrative they're they're, they're spinning. Yeah. Well, so, it's like the last thing ahead. that happened here in the press. Some of the press outlets were whitening the guy's picture. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so Hank, can it? you look up on the computer? What's the age of consent in Alabama? Probably I know 16. Ohio is 14. <laughs> Why the reason do you I'm asking it, Because of the senator that's getting down there in Alabama, this girl was supposedly 14. Like in South Carolina, North Carolina, I think Ohio is age 14. Well, in the media, this guy is being portrayed as, oh, this is wrong, he's a pedophile. But some states, the age of consent is 14. Yeah, oh, the dude was 32. Uh, Alabama that's is 16, wrong. but yeah, I don't, I don't really think that has... Um, I'm not saying either way. I don't know if that's relevant to me. I don't really care what the age of consent is. You know, if this guy was doing this thing. Well, here's that's the thing. Then, the biggest thing you said, if. Mm -hmm. And that's where. Right, right. So, and I so don't know what, your word against his. I don't know. And I don't know enough about that particular case. Um, I guess they're mm -hmm. saying he was dating high school girls or something. But um, I, I, and I don't know even what he said. If he's come out. To, Do not at all. It's sort of like, well, I guess the onus is on you to prove that this happened 40 years ago. Right. So how are you yeah. going to prove um, it did and how are you going to prove it didn't? Exactly. Whereas Kevin Spacey took a different tact where he said, uh, I don't remember that, but if it did happen, <laughs> I must have been drunk and I feel sorry and I'm apologizing because yeah, yeah, right, that's right, horrific right. and there's no yeah. way. And by the way, I'm gay. <laughs> I misspoke. <laughs> I love that term too. I misspoke. Right. Okay. Now Lola's yeah. saying Lola's saying that there's people out there that are you know this is a, like a little bit too sensitive for them and all that kind of stuff, which oh, I understand. Okay. I think this is what's going on in the news, so we're talking about it. If you guys have some other news that you want to talk about, we could definitely get into that. I don't think it's going to be any less uh, troubling, you know. I know there was another shooting yesterday. The one uh, in California? Yeah. What is know, school um, that's something that's going on in the news. You know, I yeah, think they, we're, they we're just going to continue to have these two things. pistols. They didn't say what kind of rifle. Yeah. Well, probably because it wasn't a black one. <laughs> well, right? and well, and also, you know, someone who, sh who, according to California, from what they do, California spends a lot of time taking away guns from people, and it seems like this guy – Maybe he shouldn't have had guns, according to California. Yeah, he just got out of jail. Yeah, so but he still had them anyway in California. It doesn't do anything. So I think ultimately, I mean, it comes back to the same circular argument we always have. The best protection is the one you have in the moment, right? You know, and schools are wide open. I think in this case, the school kind of, they were able to shut down everything and, and not allow the guy to get into the school. But, you know, they it, things could have gone the other way there. Um, and I personally believe that people should be able to even defend the schools. I know there's lots of schools in America and lots of uh, states that don't want that. But I so think we should a, think about that before it's too late. There's a Blue Ridge Community College is not down too far down the road from me. And I think it's one of very few. It's one of a handful of skew, schools that allows concealed carry on campus if you're – obviously, if you've got the concealed carry permit. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. Well – are you talking about high school or college? No, it's a college, a community college. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, uh, I mean, I agree with that. I think I think it should be, you know, on on um, colleges or what as well. But I think we're forgetting K through twelve. You know, these are the most valuable things to us. I'm not saying obviously our kids are still valuable to us when they go off to college, but they're a little older. But from kindergarten to 12th grade, you know, we send our kids there and they're not really secured. In some cases, you might have like one police officer, maybe in bigger schools, you might have two. But that's not enough if someone decided to go after our schools. It's like wide open. Why don't they put the sheriff's department on, on school property? Wait. Oh, are you they could put in a. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> like what? I, put the jails and everything in there. I was going to say no. Just, just, just the sheriff's headquarters. Why not put it on the the 
high school properties, it keeps the drugs down from the school. Anything mm-hmm. happens, there's a law enforcement right there. I'm not saying keep the jails and, and all that other stuff, but keep like the head sheriff of that county or something oh, at he's that gonna school. Go that. He's going to go for that. That's a, uh, I can see the sheriff wanting to be in the high school. Yeah, that's I think a, what we I think what would be a simpler, school. more elegant solution is that we allow schools to defend themselves and allow people to volunteer mm-hmm. and be vetted and train. And, that's also and, a good option. To protect well, the schools, I mean, that's my opinion. Even just to world. look at the teachers, there's got to be, you know, three or four teachers in every school who would be, willing, would be willing to carry a firearm at school to be the, you know, it, certain teachers have to take CPR training, I'm sure. Certain teachers have to go through certain uh, protocols to do things and to deal with peanut allergies and things of that nature. <laughs> so uh, you'd be willing to bet there's probably three or four people in the school who would be willing to go through very extensive background checks and training and, and courses to be signed off to carry in school. Yeah. Um, yeah. Offer them an extra $5 an hour on their pay for the additional training to carry, make an incentive for it. Uh, so, yeah. Ken Shiro oh, says that, our that. school cop got busted for picking up an undercover prostitute. <laughs> well, that happens. Uh, yeah, it happens. It happens. Well, and I mean that you're not gonna you're not gonna ever stop yeah. that you're never gonna stop the student sleeping with teachers and the teacher sleeping with students, like th- it's just chemistry. You're not yeah, gonna I stop. I personally that. don't even know if the prostitution should even be illegal. There's a lot of things that I think that we're wasting our time. Well, see that the problem that he had there was he didn't have a tripod with him because he could have just claimed he was filming and you know, <laughs> I mean. He could have claimed it somehow was, it was part of his religion too. You he know? might have had a tri- he might have had a, had a tripod, but not what you're thinking. Maybe <laughs> he's in the church of prostitution. I don't know. You know, if, yeah. if you're paying and it's behind closed door, it's illegal. If it's on on a camera in front of the screen for the masses, then it's it's uh, all new. Yeah. It's totally legal again. It's First Amendment. Yeah, just making a movie. Yeah, First Amendment. <laughs> making a movie. It's this is all comedy. It's all comedy. Everything we do here is comedy. Uh, Satire, uh, entertainment purposes only. only. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you know what? It's it's terrible to hear about these things. I think that we just need to realize that the the, the world's been like this for a long time. Yeah, you know, and uh, exactly. you know, we just need to we we just need in that moment when people are broken and decide to go after people. We, we just need to be able to defend ourselves from them. Yeah, you, yeah. I, I don't want to turn the schools into these like army camps. It, it, yeah. It's not, that's, yeah. well, you're, you, you, you know, your school used to be a place where you could come and go and, you know, do, but now it's all fenced up and they're all this and they're all that. And, and honestly, if somebody went in that school, they could walk right through the office front door, shoot the people and keep right on going. You know, it, it's, that, that, yeah, I think we just, camps is not the, is not the answer. You have to take care of the people that are the problem. I think that there isn't yeah. one simple solution to anything. I used to lock a lot of nut. I used to lock a lot of nuts up, but now, God forbid, you can't lock somebody up because they're nutty because they have all kinds of rights and stuff. So, figure that one out. Yeah, I, I don't think there's <laughs> one simple solution for anything. I think there's multiple <laughs> solutions that we have to think about. Did you see where the U.S. Army is dropping the standards oh, for the uh, met- the, the mental issue? Oh, fuck yeah. Me. Come on. Well, I think right. they reversed that. I think I saw somewhere. Hold on, I'm going to pull it up right now. I think if Mattis, actually, if Mattis went for that, I can't see that because he's well. Not here, so here's what it said. Um, USA Today has this article. It says Army says USA Today story forced it to drop plans for waivers for high risk recruits. Why so do you want to bring the freak show into the army? Yeah. They, why do you, you want to coddle the you have enough problems in the army with post-traumatic stress. Exactly. And so you're going to bring people and have issues already that carry guns and launch weapons? Well, yeah. because they, you know, maybe they're having a hard time uh, recruiting. No, that's not a good. Uh, that's not a good. Going to the army, yeah, but that's not, you good, know. that's not a good excuse. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, they got they got problems with guys wanting to get uh, fully automatic weapons now, and then they're going to let them people in the army who have access. Those three round bursts and fully automatic weapons. Come on, man. Where's the common sense? Yeah, maybe bring back, uh, bring back the draft, or or go back, go to something like where everyone has to serve. Or here's a better idea. I like just maybe scale back what our operations are and where they're at and why. <laughs> yeah, we need to stop the Meals on Wheels, and we need to stop the uh, kind of coddle the Arabs into into if being we, our, think, thinking our way and let them kill each other until there's none of them left. I think right. if we rein those things in a little bit, like we we, you know, we could we could kind of do a little bit better there. Yeah, we'll be we wouldn't be as stressed uh, stretched 
as thinly as we are. I don't for think sure. We'll, there's lots of things we don't. There's lots of fights we don't have to fight. We don't. I don't it all comes hard. down to uh, misguided federal funds. Yes, but, sir. Yeah. but a lot of that too is like we said. It's big, big business. It's oil. It's government contracts, and it's yeah. it's. You know about Halliburton. We got to sell more tanks and MRAPs and everything else. Well, that's good for the economy, though. <laughs> so, oh, I think oh, there's sorry. lots of things we can do that's good for the economy. I think ultimately, <laughs> um, you know, I, I can't, I can't argue that point at all. I think that we, we are, we're, we're fighting wars that we shouldn't be fighting, and that people don't appreciate us fighting, and uh, and then we're not properly compensated for it either. Well, Chris. Well, look, yeah. Look at that. We're, we, we live in the world of instant information and technology with news. And while we talk, you can be looking up and fact checking and vetting and trying yep. to get to the bottom of things. We have that luxury in the United States to have 4G networks everywhere and everything else. You go to these other countries, you know, second and third world countries, the the the, the populace there, one they don't have the formal education that we were very, we were all, we all had the ability to grow up in a country where we have great education. And then two, they don't have the infrastructure or the smartphones and the technology to have the world in their pocket so that they can search and refute and look up and learn. So all of their opinions of what's going on is being, is being given to them either by the propaganda arm of, of said regime in whichever country of your choice or, or by the radical some religious leader of yeah. and it's not necessarily i'm not saying muslim i'm not, it's whatever religious leader you know there's there's radical religious leaders of all ilk and all color creed and nation so we are very fortunate in that we want to we want to dig to the bottom of it um as a people as as far as americans and then us, we, as far as gun owners, are even more so because I think one of the things of firearm ownership that intrigues me is when you when you recognize the absolutely destructive power that a that a firearm rep uh, has, you have a, a gravity, a sense of responsibility to for your sake, for your children's sake, for your family's sake, and and for the sake of all mankind. You, you treat that with great responsibility. It's the whole Spider-Man, you know, with great whatever comes great responsibility. And uh, we have that. And especially as gun owners, we, we like double have that. Whereas these these other countries, not to say they're dumber than us, they, they just haven't had the opportunities that we've had or the education and the technology to, to get to the bottom of the facts. So they can build their entire scope of their opinion on us from those leaders or from the news that they do get and that that makes for a very dicey situation and the more we intervene on these things the the further we push it the other way yeah absolutely and i think sometimes people just have to learn to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps i yes. think that's pretty much what happened in america i'm not saying that people didn't influence america it's not our in the responsibility few years that it's been here but it's not our responsibility to, to show everybody how to wash their private parts off I brought yeah, that up. I brought yeah. that up in private things where the government has programs teaching people in Africa how to clean their private parts. Well, freedom, freedom and liberty is a scary. It is a scary proposition. You know, you got to figure it out for yourself. You got to go carve out some kind of existence from the from the land. You know, you you're, you decide to go be a pioneer. So, like you said, we we pulled it up by our bootstraps and we figured it out for ourselves. And by and large, if, if you know you and I don't agree, well, we kind of stick to ourselves over here. We bump into each other in town. We get along amicably. We understand we don't agree, and that's fine. We don't all have to agree on everything. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, yeah. It's, they're, they don't even have an idea of what does it mean to, to, to pull up their own bootstraps and, and to, to dig down deep. And n even if they wanted to, because they don't have the Second Amendment and the First Amendment and the Constitution, they couldn't do it if they wanted to. No. So how do they how do they fight back if if only the warlords are the one with the guns and and they don't they don't have a means to fight back? What are you going to fight a guy with an AK with a machete? No, yeah. most of the time the world is con the world has been conditioned to wait for us to come in and save them. Unfortunately, by the way, Tyvin, um, I just want to say Miss Sherry Wine is in the chat. That's that's Tyvin's wife, by the way. So, hi, Sherry. Uh, I love you. She's in the chat. Oh, she says that's hi. So. Whenever I she... called her before the podcast. Oh, okay. that way I was just she checking. Right. I was just checking. Because when you disappear, you know, Cherry Wine comes looking for you, and then she's like, 
He's hanging out with Hank Strange again. Let's see yeah. what's going on. So, um, is there any other new stuff you guys want? Any cool? Let's go to some like cool gun things. Oh, hey, well, hang on now. Hang on. Um, we're yeah, gonna what? do the, we're gonna do vaporware news here. Uh oh, where's it at? Where's it at on the firearms blog? What are we talking Desert about? Desert Tech MDR. Finally, there's a story. A what? Okay, start over. Start over. The Desert Tech MDR. That's been that's been trickling. That's out. Well, but yeah, there's a there's a story about it on the firearms blog. I guess they're actually shipping some stuff now. Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's yeah. We knew that was going to happen eventually. I think the first couple of hundred went out uh, a few months ago. Okay. Yeah. So maybe now they're uh, shipping. They're shipping them. They're slowly starting to get them out there. Okay. Here's one of the things I think uh, was a good thing in the in the news. You guys might want. Did, who watches uh, Walking Dead? I don't watch it anymore. I watched the first couple of seasons. Ivan. No, so I've been saying no. No, uh, Walter. So, no. Sounds like uh, we all have Tim. jobs. Oh yeah. Okay. No one watches. No one's watching Walking Dead. Uh oh. Okay. Walking Dead is a zombie show apparently because no one's I know watching. what it's about, but yeah, not yeah. Um, it's in the news because uh, on the Truth About Guns, there's an article here that says, "Question of the day: What's the biggest firearm fail you've seen on TV or film?" And here's the reason why: The Walking Dead in the in the last episode, there was this car chase scene that was going on where the main character was in a jeep. And I think these guys were, sh I didn't see it, so I'm reading the description here. These guys were shooting at him with a 50 cal, and all it was doing was scratching the paint off. <laughs> well, let me tell you what. <laughs> Can we redo that one? Yeah. I'll, so, donate, I'll donate the uh, API team. We'll see what it does to that Jeep. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you guys think about that? Is that like picture like a picture, like I always say? Is it you know, what we expect Hollywood. at this point? Yeah. That's how they would. Could they, could they do a little better? <laughs> Yeah, they could have took it out with a couple of shots. Yeah, but uh, that's kind of like when you used to watch the eighteen. And it was a machine gun. It's a fifty oh, caliber geez. machine gun they were shooting at him with, and he survived this whole thing with just a couple of paint scratches. What? Yeah, that's yeah. Hollywood. So, Hollywood. Um. Next. Next. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I agree, Tim. I agree, Tim. All right. Yeah. No one wants to cover that. I guess that's not too <laughs> no. interesting. That's not good. So that's not so interesting. That's terrible. I think they should get. I think these shows need to hire real gun guys, and I'm sure they have some got someone there who's an expert. Well, I thought um, they brought Demolition Ranch up or Matt. Wasn't he in a couple of those Walking Dead TV things? Okay, I don't think they hired him as an expert. <laughs> no, he was just come up and be part of it. But if you're a gun guy like he is and experienced, he would see something like, nah, that's that that's not real. Well, I think what happens sometimes with this is that, um, so first of all, on a lot of these shows, they use um, airsoft. They don't use, they don't even use blank guns or anything like that. They use airsoft and then someone digitally puts in the damage later. So maybe the guy that was digitally putting in the damage you know, didn't really know what was going on here. Possibility, possibility. Yeah, so that's how that winds up happening. But along the process, I don't, I don't know if people really cared. I'm sure that, well, we're not watching Walking Dead. I'm sure someone is. Anybody watch? Not, um, not a fan. Does anybody okay, watch? Yeah. That sh it's a show on. Uh, you know why? You know why we? You know why the Walking Dead is not? It's boring. Boring to us. All the people that are fans of Walking Dead, not all. I know. I have friends that are gun people that love the show, but. Hey, most of us live that tank. I mean, you go home, like you said, you've got guns out in, in the, yeah. on the kitchen. Those zombies, counter. all those zombies would have been dead already. So, I mean, how many years are these zombies going to walk the earth? So, yeah, <laughs> they, it's, it. they've, they've changed it to where the zombies aren't even the zombies now. It's the other people that are, you know, quote unquote humans are the ones that are the zombies. It's just, I don't know. It's, it became such a labor, the, 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 the suspension of my disbelief became too labor intensive for me to be able to keep up. It was yeah. asking me at every corner to just disbelieve everything that is physics. Yeah. I think a lot of people use the walking dead as a crutch to sell products. They're, they're, well, the zombies are coming. There's zombies coming Buy yeah. my AR, Buy sure. my grenades, Buy my, you know, 25 uh, year meal pack because the zombies are coming. Sure. Yeah. That's um, true. Chris but it's we're we're a good 15 years into this zombie cycle now it's got to go away at some point um, yeah. yeah there's no way i could tell you definitely okay in london in england for that matter for most of europe i could see how the zombie apocalypse can go on but in america 
No. It's not really going to, uh, if there was such a thing, if that was capable of happening, that's not going on for a long time. No. <laughs> the zombie apocalypse would be over in about even, three even, minutes in America. Even, yeah, even these Democrats who want to take our guns, they got guns. <laughs> Yeah. And they, you know, this is re this would really not last a long time. Um, yeah. By the way, Crispy says um, Matt from Demo Ranch was um, in a soon to be released zombie movie with uh, with Hickok, so that he wasn't in uh, Walking Dead. That was something oh, else. Okay, with yeah. Hickok. And, well, and we do have some fans. There's some people chiming in. They are fans. They still watch Walking Dead, and they yeah. laughed when they saw that stuff. But you know, we there's lots of wrong, terrible things that happen in movies. So the, the opposite Keep of that, entertainment. The opposite of that is like John Wick, John Wick 2 specifically, when uh, Keanu Reeves goes out there and he trains his ass off, not only with firearms, but with martial arts and jiu-jitsu and, and all of the stuff that he's doing. He's actually doing the proper technique. He's got the right holds and he's making the right impacts and he's doing the right grappling. And it's he <clears throat> practices and practices and practices. So he's got that muscle memory. So by and large, when you watch that, it's so fast paced and it looks Hollywood and it is Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, because it's the world where everyone's an assassin. Everyone and their mama is an assassin. But it's it's we enjoy it more, though, because but, uh, but when you when you dissect it and you really watch the weapons manipulation, they're doing it right. They're getting yeah. it right as it sh as it should be, because they all are. Like you said, they all are high, high level, top tier assassins. He respects the art and then portrays it in a correct manner. That way it's not uh, disbelieved. It's not like in The Walking Dead. I think in the first season when it was really getting started and I started watching it, in the first or second episode, I remember he was standing behind a car and uh, it, it wasn't even – it was pre-zombie. It was before there were zombies. They were just responding to a call. And he told his partner to get ready, and he cocked his Glock. It, it made a yeah. very distinct, uh, like a, a revolver cock. And it just, they, you know, you had me from hello. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're not the only one. Uh, my brother was telling me, complaining to me about that today. That's things that sticks in his head from Walking Dead, and it always will. But we've seen we've seen that in movies. I remember in the Ant Man movie, there was a, one of the characters had a Glock with a. Um, with a hammer on it yeah you know well it's it's funny it's like ant-man it's like i'll buy the guy that can shrink down and he can be a tiny little suit and he can run up your arm and kick your ass and get big again but i'm not <laughs> buying the fact that that glock has a hammer screw yeah, you no <laughs> that's where i draw the line <laughs> who do you take me for i've got standards <laughs> yeah. hey hey can we see the gun behind you we haven't had any gun porn yet Oh, okay. I'll I'll take this gun. I'll take this gun. What, what what you got back here? This is um this is my SBR. I know it doesn't necessarily look like an SBR, but it's a little bit. I didn't make it looks it looks longer because I've got a, a suppressor. So from here is suppressor, right here. So it's 11 inch barrel with a okay. honking suppressor on it, and it has a folding stock. There you go. A lot of tactical folders on it. I haven't put any optics on it yet, so. But uh, this is, you know, this is my SBR that I built up. Two, two, three, five, five, six. Um, it is, it is five, five, six. Okay. Yeah. So. Very good for me. Got lots of good things. This so what are you gonna run through there? You gonna run a fifty-five grain, sixty-five, seventy-seven grain? What, what's your optimal <laughs> round? Here Whatever you somebody at? brings out to the house, the end of that's what he's running. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever candy can stick his hand Whatever, to. Yeah. Whatever <laughs> magazines are loaded up. <laughs> Yeah. That's what's going okay. in this bad boy and throwing some hot lead in your direction. I don't really worry too much about like green, green, green tip, yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah, but you only shoot like 30 yards with it. You know, when I go to the range, I shoot it at 500. So oh, I, I, I specifically have to know what grain that I use that works best in my rifle. That's why I was asking. Oh, yeah, really? when he puts that binary trigger on, he don't give so, a. Wait a second. You're trying to say that when I shoot, I only shoot 30 yards. Okay. Well, no, you're usually at your farm, and I see right, this big right. dirt pile, and then I see Walter with that man cannon of a 50 cal, <laughs> one handed, boom. <laughs> okay, and I'm well, looking. That, no, even that, yeah, that, maybe that. I think at, at uh, on the Hacienda, we can go out to like 100 yards. If we're going to shoot okay. further than that, we go further away. But, uh, you know, I, I usually do, like, that long-distance stuff when I'm in the desert somewhere. Well, I've seen you guys did the uh, the muzzle loader, and you guys were shooting down the tree line down between the trees there. 
Yeah. I didn't know if that was part of yours or segue to your property or whatever. No, that's that's an undisclosed asking. location. Undisclosed okay. location. Yeah. By the way, my brother Anonymous Strange is texting me, Tim. He wants yeah. he wants that he's watching the show right now. What's up? Uh, people <laughs> believe that my because we call him anonymous because you know he like doesn't he doesn't want his name revealed, none of that kind of stuff. And he but he does watch and he's texting me because like I said, he has an FJ. And he wants that panel for his engine. Okay. <laughs> so, I'll talk with the guy at the shop and we can see. We'll get something set up. And since you do car stuff, it'd be a good segue. Yeah, absolutely. I will do a video. Uh, either my brother will come out to me or I'll go to him and we'll do a video and we'll show it and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Tim, you, are you carrying? You got anything there in your pocket? <laughs> oh. ah, I got something in my pocket. Just for yeah, I, got hey, I said pocket, not pants. <laughs> so it's, it's just my. It's just what I carry. You're going to have to put a light on it. <laughs> Glock, nah, is that a Glock 19? It's just a, it's a Glock 19. There Nothing fancy, just standard run-of-the-mill, one in the pipe. Yeah, best uh, gun in the world. Stock trigger. Like, I'm I'm not real big on, uh, I don't know, fancy accoutrements. Although, I, I do I do like my folks over at Geisley make some some amazing triggers. And I've got a few of them. I was, I mean, I, I'm not picky. Yeah. I will, has, I'll Geisley, drive. has Geisley gotten into the Glock business yet? Have they like made a Glock trigger yet? I don't know. I don't think they have been for the yeah. Glock, but I know for their, the AR and the AK game. Yeah, they've got um, new triggers, yeah. I was just wondering. I mean, I'm surprised they haven't. I know some other companies have gotten into the the handgun trigger business. I don't know. With this ALG, the, their ALG line, they've got some. When you go to the shoots, they've got some really well decked out uh, Glocks. Yeah. With, with some RMRs, some optics, and yeah. cans and whatnot. Um, and they get that little rail that they you mount on the top. But yeah, I think uh, that's is that the six second. That's like one of the best things I've ever seen for um, the best. Is that the six second rail? It's something like that. Something, something to do with time, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I just know it's the purple gun that I shoot, you know, twice a year. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm a good gonna, setup. It's a good setup. Yeah. But yeah. but I, I, I mean, I I love accessories, and, and I can geek out over that kind of stuff. But uh, I just – I like the thing that works, you know. And yeah. I'm not too picky. But I'm that way about motorcycles, cars, whatever. Yeah. You know. What kind of cars are you into? Me? I buy v fleet vehicles. <laughs> this one was an ambulance. It's converted. My other one was a. Uh, I have a police interceptor, Crown Victoria. Nice. Walter has one of those. For his, um, his son drives one well, of those. Yeah. I, I was looking at fire trucks and school buses. I just I like fleet maintained vehicles because uh, they're all meant to last a long time. Really, well, in that but. case, I got several semis that I can hook you up with. <laughs> yeah, when are you guys doing a semi truck? Come on now. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey, yeah. look, I got I got bunk beds, refrigerator. <laughs> you can get them with stand up showers, microwaves. You need you know, to make air a tactical wall for the for the, uh, for the cabin there. Yeah, we can put tactical walls back here. We got you hooked up, man. Just we'll make something for that stand up shower. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> call me. I'll yeah, hook you uh, up. Call me. We've got several questions coming in. I think uh, Home Runner wants to know best Glock trigger. Vanessa Kitty says, "Yeah, a nice trigger for the Glock?" Question mark. Um, you guys are probably asking the wrong people. Uh, Walter, do you because do you modify your Glocks that much and put in triggers and stuff? I I don't, keep, but keep, I do keep I, it simple. I do know that my finger hurts a whole. I shoot my carry gun worse than every other Glock I ever pick up when I'm at a show. When I'm when I'm somewhere and someone's got a Glock with a nice trigger, I always shoot the other Glock better than my carry Glock, almost hands down. Yeah. And uh, but I don't worry about it because my carry Glock, if I ever need to use it, it's going to be within a ten foot. It's not. I'm not shooting out at the distance of the pistol range with my and it works uh, defensive weapon. Um, it's just not going to happen, but yeah, I mean, unless I'm building up a, like, unless we're building up a polymer 80 Glock or something like that, we don't put triggers in there. Um, I know I think you start messing with some of that stuff sometimes and you mess them up. I've got yeah. a salient, I've got a real nice Glock salient. That's got a pretty damn nice trigger in it. And I mean, I couldn't tell you what kind of trigger it was, if it's salience or if it's something else. But No, there's a company that makes some good triggers. Uh, it's escaping my mind right now. If I was in the store, there's a lot. There's a bunch of them in the store. Um, 
you know, I typically for the Glocks that I carry on me, I don't change the triggers or anything like that. What do you think for, about um, that? For, go ahead. That M and P, the new M and P, didn't they just kind of revamp their trigger again? Um, yes, they You're did. About the two point oh. Yeah, the 2.0, I think it's good. Lots of people are switching over, but most of those people are changing out that trigger and putting in a, a different trigger in it because the, the, the weak part of it is the trigger because the safety, it's, you know, obviously Glock has the uh, patent the, on the blade. On, yeah, on that trigger safety that Glock does, which to me is a bit, I'm just used to that trigger. So I really don't need anything better than that for what I do. I don't compete or anything. Um, but I know that the uh, guys that are switching over to that are changing the trigger for the most part because that's the weak link of it. Everything else from what I hear people like it. We're planning on doing some videos on that. Um, you know, So you guys will see that coming out soon and I know there's a bunch of other videos on that as well. Apex. Okay, Music Lover says Apex Trigger. That's what I was trying to think of. That is a pretty good trigger when I talk to the Glock guys. I think that I talked to them at the US well, no, it was up in Wisconsin, the carry guard, NRA carry guard show. That, that yeah. may have been who we were talking to up there. Yeah, and then uh, Vanessa Kitty wants to know, okay, she says, okay, best Polymer 80 build sets. Um, you know, you can get it directly from Polymer 80. Brownells has some exclusive stuff, and you can get every single thing you want from Brownells as well for building up that stuff. So, And then you just have so many options and choices. I think uh, Polymer 80 makes uh, a slide. You know, and there's lots of people that make um, sets for it. So go ahead yeah. and do that. Did you guys want to add it, anything to that? I see a lot of guys when they buy their guns, handguns, rifles, or whatever. Mm -hmm. They want to go and buy all the attachments or whatever they want for their gun. You know, I get mine. I want to personalize mine. I always get mine, like, etched or get my name on it or, you know, something like that. A lot of guys don't see that as an option, as a personalization for their weapon, you know, have, you know, like the old school engravings and stuff done with their weapons. They always go out and buy that $500 scope or whatever. They don't really like personalize it to themselves. And that's what I'm big at doing, you know, is get my name on it or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably collecting it, and you're probably not selling it. I mean, there's a lot of gun guys that That's just... That's correct. Yeah, there's gun guys that buy stuff, they enjoy it, then they, they trade up or move on to other things, so... I just uh, buy it and use it until it doesn't work anymore. I, That's, think, yeah. I think a lot of people, they don't even... They buy this, say, like they buy a SIG MPX. And now, bless their hearts, I want them to buy my stuff. But before they even know how the gun works or how it, they're getting this and they're getting that, and they're changing the handguards out, they're putting new triggers in it, and they don't even know how the thing operates. And they'll never know how it operates because they never have a stock gun. That's why Krebs and the other guy last night yeah. was talking about the AKs. Yeah, don't put nothing on it. Go shoot, shoot it. it. Learn yeah. it. Feel what you like. And, and then yeah. maybe go and do something. Right. That's true with a lot of stuff. And that's not really emphasized that's a lot. That's in the, in the... Yeah. Say what, Walter? People do it with cars the same way. Yeah, absolutely. They get a brand yeah. new car and they got to go get the new wheels. Well, yeah, a new car. Uh, yeah, because I don't somebody because somebody said it was awesome, and it's like yeah. you don't even know how the car operates, and you're out fucking it up. To be yeah. honest with you, drive I mean, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you gotta, you I heard Lola tint the back windows, there, drive it. Tint the, tint the, tint the windows. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, I'll give you. I'll give you the tint the windows. That's definitely yeah, that's cool. a must. Yeah, that's, mud that's mats. A, mud mats. That's well, cool. that's that's needed too. Yeah, yeah. you got to do mud mats. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I I agree a hundred percent. Mud, coffee, water. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, we've been going for two hours. We've got we got Tim is sitting out in the cold. I got I got one last question for Tim. Um, okay, well, this is the uh, one last question. Tim, Tim, on your products, I see the one behind Walter. It's in a black finish. Um, what I mean, all behind colors? Me, behind me. Yes. What all colors and uh, textures or after pieces that you can put on your products? Do you do anything like that? We've got a black, uh, we've got a walnut cherry. We've got a sort of an early American looking golden oak kind of color where it's more of a, a yellow or a natural. That's um, on the woods, right? But that's not on these mod walls. No, no, those walls, those panels are just black. That's, yeah. that's just what it is. Any color you want if it's black. Yeah, exactly. Henry Ford style. Yeah. <laughs> like, keep yeah. it simple. But yeah. But yeah, the upper right. piece, the mantle he's got, you can yeah, get that, that in different colors and tones. Exactly. Any of our mirrors or shelves or lamps, any of our wood products can be had in a variety of stains. And then there's some different trim options as well. And all that can be seen on the website. 
Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate okay. you answering Absolutely. that for me. Yeah, and for anyone that wants to know, there's links in the video description, so you guys can go check that out. We've got um, we've got lots of links there actually for things that you guys might be interested in. So um, it's a good way to support the channel, um, as well as there's some deals in in the uh, description if you guys want to look. And uh, tactical walls is definitely in there. Uh, Tim, what if they want to? What if they want to give you Bitcoin? Where do they do that? Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, want to give you Bitcoin? How do they hey, do I'll that? I'll take those. I, I don't even know. I don't even <laughs> know about the bitcoins, but I'll take them. <laughs> hey, Ron Hall, uh, what's the uh, attorney or the uh, the candidate, Ron something? He's pimping the bitcoin commercials now. Oh, okay. uh, like Ron Paul. Ron Paul, that's Ron it. Paul. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. Well, if you want to send me Bitcoin, please, by all means. <laughs> that shit scares me because I don't even know what it's about. So, yeah. you know, it's like. Um, change the Bitcoin over to gold and then send yeah, it to I'll me. I'll take the gold, baby. Yeah. Change it to gold <laughs> and send it to me. Um, I don't need no. Yeah. You don't need no Bitcoin? I don't well, need there's no Bitcoin. Somebody, some idea somebody came up with. It well, I've seen it. guys that bought into Bitcoin in the early because Bitcoin's going up. So I think like a Bitcoin's worth like five, six hundred bucks right now. No, Bitcoin was worth eight thousand dollars about oh. four days ago. Oh, there you go, yeah. eight thousand. So and it just go. came back down to about money. six thousand. It came hey. back down to six, but um, I don't have any, so I yeah, but I, I do get it and I don't get it, you know. But hey, you want some bitcoins? Here's the bitcoins. Yeah, I got your yeah. bitcoin right here. No, hey, actually, hamburgers, gold, and brass. You can't go wrong. <laughs> you think if I made in. some uh, morale coins, some of the the the, the challenge Token? coins, maybe yeah. I, I make some of them with Hillary's face and call them bitch coins. You think people would buy them? <laughs> oh, 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 good one. <laughs> hey, I, no, you just gave me an idea. Now you're gonna have to do it. You better start no. quick because I got some Chinamen that make that real fast for me. <laughs> Done. <laughs> you better go do it now, otherwise. We'll so, on it. Bitcoins, yeah. yeah. Inflation's gonna happen. Real the new quick. currency. It's bitcoins. Yeah. Well, listen. Some people got into the Bitcoin thing, and and I mean, I I don't even know about it, as Tim um, yeah, aptly know, pointed yeah. out there, because I didn't even know the value. But I've heard there's dudes that got into it early and put, you know, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks into it, and then today they could go buy like supercars with the money. So, hey, if yep. it works for you and you get away with it, it's awesome. Just like anything yeah. else, just like the stock market, just like money. The money that we have today is not uh -oh. worth what it used to be 20 years ago. So, well, like yeah. I said, invest in not gold, but guns. <laughs> yeah. You want tangible things that you can ha have and hold. Yeah. So. Yeah, there you go. Listen, Tim, would love to have you back on, man. Uh, you know, I don't want to keep you out there. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah I I'm sure. Where are you exactly? What? You know. In my driveway, in my van. Yeah, but Virginia. you're in what state are you in, in Virginia. Virginia? Yeah, it's it's probably a little chilly there in Virginia. So we'd love to have you back on in the near future if you'd like to come back on. Yeah, we, we'll come back on again. Will, I will. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, we look forward to that. And by then, we'll have more stuff here on the walls. You know, we're, we're going to use these walls are here to stay. So these are the Yay, official. Yay, finally. Yeah, these are, yeah, it's about time <laughs> we put up some stuff here. So that's like a big thank you. From I'm the uh, hex train situation, Tim, for providing us with something interesting. Now it's going to be in the background. We got lots of complaints, so we didn't have anything cool in the background. Everybody was complaining because Hank didn't have a place to put his balls. Yeah, so now I, I do have a place to hang your balls up up there. Yeah, you know what I'm in which to prop my balls. Tim has no idea what this. Do you know what we're talking about? The tackle yeah, balls. balls up the top. Yeah, here's the. I mean, I, I saw they're like the play balls from like yeah. the kids yeah. play. So what we use these like, tactical balls for is when we get a bag or something like that, we see how many balls go in the bag. Okay. So that's what. And then, it, then it went off the scales that day of that podcast. It went way off the yeah. scale. Yeah. So people it like the, uh, people like the double and triple entendres of the tactical of the tactical balls and how many we can get into a thing. So now I have a place where they're right up here. So at a moment's notice, if a bag comes in, you know, we'll be able to hang it up there. But, but you know, thankfully that we have this, we can hang up guns, we can hang up plate carriers and helmets. And I all usually that stop other counting stuff. after I can fit two. <laughs> really? <laughs> you hang Hank's patch, his uh, uh, rooster patch. You need to stick right in the center right there on the top of the wall. Yes, we'll put we'll we'll do a little uh, patch wall somewhere back there too. So um, you know, thanks a lot for that. And like I said, there's links for anyone who's looking. Uh, for my brother anonymous, I'll try my best to after we go off air here to work that out for you. And um, you know, I mean, maybe if we really get it, if if people really get excited about the FJ thing, you guys might do it, right? 
or do other cars? Well, no, I, we we definitely could. We could even do small runs. We you know we could commit to making twenty five of them and get them up on whatever FJ forum, and just mm -hmm. get them out there and get them. You know, once people have them and they see them, and then once Jeep guys see them, they're going to be like, oh, "Whoa, yeah. what do you make for a Jeep?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I I already want to know what you make for a Forerunner. Yeah, Forerunner. You know, or what you make for a pickup truck or something like that. You know? He wants to know what you make for an Audi. Don't let him lie to yeah. you. <laughs> Man, I like Audis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're just teasing me because I got an Audi TT. And, uh, you know. I'm not saying a there's, word. There's, there's there's a little bit of space in there. Put a little something in there. Get a couple of guns little, in there. Put a little, little patch about yay big. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so let me let Tim. Is is there anything you want us to do before you go? Before we um, get out here, things you want us to go check out? Websites? Nah, nah I don't care. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, we we started working with uh, my case builder. I don't know if you're familiar with my case builder. Yes. They uh they do custom cut foam for whatever you have. There th for that shelf behind you there, Hank. Uh, you'd be able to. Lay out whatever firearms, weapons you can go on their site. They've got this real cool online tool. You make it, then you tell them that's what you want. They send, you know, that you pay for it. They send it to you, and everything fits the way it should. Oh, what's that name again? My Case Builder. My Case Builder. Yeah. Okay. You just go in there and put your dimensions in. You hit it. You pay for it, and then it comes in the mail. And it's already pre-cut out and everything. Well, and they have they have a library. They have a library of firearm shapes. So if you say, "Oh, I've got a Sig two two six, click. They already MPX. know what shape yeah. that needs to be. You know, or I've got a Sig two two six with a streamlight on the front, and they've got the shape for that. Oh, and, sweet. Uh, so if you have Pelican cases or those those plastic cases, I mean, even you know, you buy a Glock and it comes with that egg crate foam. Yeah, just the, the the normal foam. Well, you could get a custom cut foam insert that fits in the Glock box that um, really keeps everything organized and nice and lasts a long time. Oh, sweet! Yeah, I'm getting lots of positive reviews from uh, my case builder in the chat, so that's a good thing. We'll, yeah, we'll definitely check that out. Um, was there anything else? Yeah, that's it. Tacticalwalls.com. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. I think Twitter. Same name. Yep. Yeah. Tacticalwalls.com. Absolutely cool. Thanks. Um, so, Tyvin, did you have something you wanted to pitch before we go? Yeah. Uh, first, real quick, Tim, sir, thank you for answering my questions. Uh, I'm looking into your product, so thank you. It was an honor to meet you. Laura, Hank, thank you for letting me on tonight. And check me out on the Tyvin Show on YouTube. I do gaming, vlogs, guns, just whatever we're into, fishing. So check me out at the Tyvin Show. It's all the way through everything. So appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot, Tyvin. Tyvin's a real good dude. He's been helping yep. us out a lot, and he does have a YouTube channel. It's called the The Tyvin Show. Yeah, so I recommend you guys check that out. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know Walter's been on there live. I haven't showed up on there. No, did I? Yes, I did. I did an interview. Yeah, he was on there a couple times. Yeah. Walter usually jumps in. Hey, Tyvin. Hey, yeah, and he calls me out. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing, but I just check in. Yeah. Oh, I was watching yeah. with uh, Walter when we were in Vegas. Okay, so Walter, what do you do? You have anything to pitch here? Yeah, yeah, we're doing a Black Friday special. All of our stocks are going to be twenty percent off, and um, so check out the website. We're going to have um, some stuff, and I'll be doing some stuff on Facebook and YouTube. And we had an idea, Hank. Have you ever been in a Santa suit? Have I ever what? Have you ever, have Have you ever been in a Santa suit? Have I ever been in a Santa suit? Yes, I did once. When um, when I lived in Nigeria, I put on a Santa suit for these Nigerian kids and scared the living shit out of them. <laughs> they were they were all crying. They thought it was some kind of demon, and it was pretty pretty bad. <laughs> so yes. Are you gonna try to get Hank in a Santa suit for your front page? We were trying to think maybe he's Hank in a Santa suit with a bag full of like stocks, where it's coming oh, out. Oh, uh, awesome. Like, yeah, I'll oh, do it. Oh, oh, this is a Santa Strange mofo. Okay, so, yeah, so we're going to actually have to take this picture, or can you just Photoshop something? I don't know. It was just something we came up with today. So just when, Photoshop it. Oh, okay. Hey, that's today's assignment. Whoever's yeah. watching, yeah. you take a screenshot of this and then yeah. put Hank inside put of a Santa suit. on the rock's body. That's how you do it. Because that's pretty much <laughs> yeah, it's got to be like, like mighty massive. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much my build. So just put my head on, rock's bo on the rock's body, and it's all yeah. good. <laughs> There you go. Uh, there you go. But yeah, yeah 20 uh, twenty percent off on all the stocks. That's a, that's going to be, I think Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It will be a true uh, uh, Black Friday special, not a, a month of Black Friday special. And what when's that start, Walter? 
Thursday. Uh, well, probably Thursday, like, oh, wait, wait, Black Friday. Yeah, I'll start Thanksgiving Day, go Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, we're going to talk about okay. it. Uh, we're going to talk about it on the Wednesday before that on the show. So, right, all right. right. Um, I want to remind you guys that about the Krebs custom raffle that's going on. Uh, Krebs yep. is raising money for a friend and a loyal customer for a long time that his wife got cancer and he had to sell all his guns and a lot of other stuff in order to pay the bill. So Krebs Customs is trying to help out that family that's going through pretty rough times. It's uh, There's some really good things involved there. If you go back and watch the show from last night, Jim Fuller was on and um, he's what he added to that, that um, you will be able to do an AK build privately with Jim Fuller teaching. You that's that. an awesome deal right there. That's like yeah. one of those once in a lifetime opportunities if you win. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So there, we've got videos on this. It's Krebs Custom Raffle. Just search that on Google. Um, and I think we have that in the description or something like that if you guys want to find it. And it's 2,500 tickets that they're selling, and they're going to stop selling tickets December 1st. So you have a pretty good chance of winning that, or there's um, there's a few, there's two AKs involved and parts and a lot of and a lot of other cool things as well as you're helping out people. So don't forget that. Plus, sometime next week, we're giving away that Stag 10 rifle that we built up so, so that's that, next week uh yeah i just have to put i just have to put everything together and come up with the name and let you guys know who it is Tyvin one uh, <laughs> uh, uh i think know. it'd be more like the hank that's what he's yeah, uh, I, can't, the I, can't say. <laughs> I can't say yeah. so yeah so that's coming up uh once again just one last time i want to thank uh tim from tactical walls for being in here yeah. um, as well as everyone hanging out with us in the chat we really appreciate it we want to thank everyone that sponsors the hank strain situation that is safety harbor firearms this gentleman right here uh ran clp andrews custom leather um uh, who, who else sponsors us Big Daddy Guns. Big Daddy. Big, Big Daddy, Daddy Guns. Guns. Big, yeah, big sponsor of the Hank Strange situation. All right. And, of course, we're on Patreon. We're Patreon slash Hank Strange. We want to thank everyone that supports us there and encourage others to uh, go ahead and support the situation. I think that's it. We're out of here. Peace. Good night. Peace.